Previously on X Men. Is that what their that trilogy is called? Uh, I think it's just called the. Um, I'm sure there's a name for it. Because original trilogy makes sense, but also doesn't make sense because that's the first three movies. Yeah. I think it's like the the yeah, I guess the Days of Future Past timeline or the First Class trilogy or whatever. Yeah, I think it, we'll call it the First Class trilogy. We'll be talking about X Men First Class, X Men Days of Future Past, and X Men Apocalypse. Hello everyone and welcome to the concession stand. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zen. Hello. Some days I'll shake off the shackles that is the modcast intro, <laughs> but not today. No, nope, not today. No, it's not. Uh, <clears throat> oh man. We're here finally for the ending of X-Men. It's been a while. Yeah, we- it's, we kind of forgot. A l- well, we didn't forget, but it, it took a backseat to life. Yes, life happened, and then it's a shame because I watched those X-Men movies, and that had a deep impact on my life, <laughs> and I was unable to express it correctly. Whoa. So, the movies today are X-Men First Class, X-Men... Days of Future Past. Thank you. And then X- <laughs> X-Men Apocalypse. I don't know why we've hit this many X-Men movies, and now I start to forget them. <laughs> I think it was probably your body trying to stop yourself from getting to Apocalypse. Yeah, probably. Like, that that, that was the... It's much like Goku's able to now kind of sense when attacks are coming. I can sense when the move, <laughs> the bad movie's coming and I try and avoid it. <laughs> it's my ultra instinct. Oh, God. Okay, let's get started. So, X-Men First Class starts with... It's 1944... Kig Magnetos in a Nazi death camp. You may remember this from the very start of the first X-Men movie, except for they get into it a little bit more, where he's talking to a Nazi doctor played by Kevin Bacon, who I forget his real name because I see Kevin Bacon and I immediately think that's Kevin Bacon. I think it's Shaw. It is Shaw. It is Shaw, yeah. Yeah, so he's a Nazi, but then they kind of backpedal, just like when they backpedaled the Nazis in Captain America, and he goes like, I don't actually believe in the Nazis. I'm just here for the science. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't believe that uh, blonde eyes will be the future, but he does think that there will be a new type of man to come over. So he tells Kid Magneto, who has uh, magnetic powers, like, hey, move this coin or else I'll kill your mom. And he's not able to do it. And then his mom is dead. And then he freaks out because that's a smart thing to do is to <laughs> mess with the kid with magnet powers and kill his mom in front of him. And while this extremely sad thing is happening, we go to Kid Charles, who uh, meets a Kid Mystique, who looks really weird as a kid, because it's just like a little kid, but with full Mystique hair. (laughs) And then he adopts her, because he's just like, holy shit, there's another one. She pretends to be his mom, but he's psychic, so that doesn't work. And now she just kind of lives with him, and everything's fine. And so then it cuts to 1962, Maura Taggart is following something called the Hellfire Club, she finds out that mutants exist and then she finds xavier in a bar and then he reads her mind and he's like this is some real shit and then cut between this is scenes of now a grown-up magneto just hunting nazis and doing a great job at him nazi hunting which is probably my favorite thing about the movie is magneto hunting a bunch of nazis uh so now that i forget exactly how but charles is able to track kevin bacon shaw to his ship and they try and take it down, but it fails. And then he meets Magneto, who just so happened to finally be able to catch up at the same time. And he uses mutant powers, and it all looks cool. And then they join a Division X. I think, is this before or after they've convinced... No, there's a scene where they convince like, the CIA that there's such a thing as mutants. But then they escape from there, and they go do their thing. Anyway, they join a Division X. That's where they meet Hank McCoy who has the mutant power of being having weird feet and then through that (laughs) 
they recruit a stripper, Darwin, Alex Summers, Sean Cassidy, and they talk to Wolverine, who gives them the one fuck you of the movie, and then they go away. Uh, and then they start to, like, uh, all the mutants are start finally hanging out with each other, and they give themselves nicknames, and they start acting stupid, because I guess they're a bunch of kids, but I think they're all college age or so. Anyway, uh, Charles and... <laughs> I Magneto go looking for I think it's Emma I don't know but there's like a scene where Emma Frost is having sex with a general through psychic powers uh, and through that they capture her and then they she tells them that Shaw is somewhere else and then it's actually and that he wants to start World War 3 and then they cut to Shaw who is attacking the base of Division X and he has uh, his own mutants with him and then he ends up telling them they should join him and then through various means darwin gets killed he's the only black dude so they kill the black dude as quickly as they can and then stripper joins them and so there goes the other ethnic person so one is killed and the other is turned into a bad person so that's fun and then this makes them hit a training montage and during all this all the mutants are learning how to better control themselves except for beast i think because he's already kind of in control but if through this, Charles tries to get Magneto to stop being so angry and try and have, like, a happy thought. Like, smile a bit more. And uh, also, at the end of this training montage, Mystique has sex with Magneto. And then Hank turns into a beast because he used her DNA to try and cure his feet. But it didn't work out. And he just ends up turning into a giant blue guy because that's how that works. And then they all go on a mission to stop Shaw together. They're all happy fun. Magneto, I forget this because Magneto says, hey, you never looked better, Hank. And then Hank gets angry because that's not the, that's not the right thing to say to a person <laughs> after. <laughs> There's a running theme in this movie of people not saying the right thing at the right time. And that's one of them. So anyway, they find out the Shaw is at the Cuban Missile, Cuban Missile Crisis. So they battle it out. They all have like fun and they end up getting hit on a beach where Magneto and Shaw finally face off. Magneto's able to get uh, Shaw's helmet off, and <clears throat> he puts on the helmet, So, and the helmet that Shaw has is the classic Magneto helmet that prevents like psychic waves from entering his head, which is what's made tracking him down pretty hard. Uh, but then Magneto has it so that Charles can't stop him, and while Charles has Shaw in place, he slowly takes the coin that he used to I think motivate him when he was a kid and then kills him with the sh with the with the coin making it go th slowly through his head and so he kills him and that's pretty cool so he's dead now and then Charles is like we're all going to be good now because we helped save the day and then the Russians and Americans are like fuck those guys let's la launch our missiles at that tiny island and so they do, and then Magneto's like, I was right, and he stops all the missiles from coming towards them, and then he shoots it back all at that, but shoots it back at the armies, and the armies are like, fuck, and then Charles is, they, there's a scuffle, and through the scuffle, uh, someone takes a shot at Magneto, he deflects the shot, and it ends up going right up Charles's spine, this causes Magneto to finally, like, lose control of the missiles, and the missiles stop, and everyone cheers, except for the people on the beach, uh, He's able to, he thinks he stopped the bullet, but he didn't actually, but it, I guess it stopped it enough from like killing, killing him or something. Uh, so after crippling his best friend, he says, we should make a mutant of evil mutants. And then the evil guys join him and they, <laughs> they teleport away. And Mystique also joins them because he has like a, she has a talk with Charles and Charles goes like, uh, you should go with the evil guy. <laughs> Cause I think that's what you want. And she goes, <laughs> okay. And she goes with him and Charles is now in a wheelchair and he's talking to Moira and he erases her memory so that they can't interrogate her at her job. And the movie ends as Magneto frees Emma Frost and he says, call me Magneto. And for some reason, he's taken Shaw's helmet and made it completely <laughs> a different color. And he's just wearing the Magneto outfit, but there's no context for it. He's just kind of wearing the Magneto costume. <laughs> <laughs> and it ends as he says, call me Magneto. And that's X Men First Class. Pretty much, yeah. This movie was good. I mean, at the at the time when I saw it, after like the long string of very bad X Men films, uh, which is mainly, I think, X Three and Wolverine origin story. Yeah, I think this was the first one after Origins, to, like chronologically, that came out. 
Yeah, this was a good, like, shot of fun. Like, as silly as this movie is, and trust me, this is a silly-ass movie, there's at least enough fun stuff, and they and the dramatic stuff that they do with... It helps that they have uh, two great actors playing Charles and the other one playing Magneto, so that when they do the, the, the scenes that would be in any other kind of context kind of ham-fisted, it actually feels, like, legitimately really good. Like, I like the scene where they're training, and he's trying to tell them, like... Uh, <laughs> I, when I say this, it's going to sound extremely cheesy, where Charles puts back into his memory the, the like, uh, Magneto's birthday, and then, like, he starts crying, and but it's like the man cry, where it's just, like, one silent tear, and he's like, I saw your thoughts, it was beautiful, and, <laughs> and I'll be honest, when I was seeing it in the theater, I was like, hell yeah, look at that beautiful shit. <laughs> I, it's a good sign of male friendship, which is, uh which I think is important when you're trying to do Magneto and Charles. Yeah, yeah. The, the, Magneto and Charles was a huge highlight of this movie because a lot of the characters felt like who really gives a shit. <laughs> a yeah. lot of them felt that way. Yeah. I mean, like, we can go down. There are so many characters in this movie, and, like, a lot of... In terms of our overall plot hurting, the best you could say is that Mystique is maybe close to it. But Mystique's, like, storyline is really, like, fuck, like, it doesn't make much sense to me. She goes from, like, she was a good person in the beginning, and then because Magneto accepts her for her beautiful blue-ass self, she goes with him, I think? I don't think she really believes in his ideals, or at least I don't feel like she believes in him fully, even though they do a pretty good job of making it seem like Magneto was right throughout the entire movie. Yeah. It, okay, so for characters that I didn't like hate the entire time they were on the screen, it was pretty much Magneto, Charles, Mystique, and uh Beast. Yeah. And everyone else, I mean the villains obviously mattered sort of. Yeah. I but mean like, Kevin, Kevin Bacon's playing up his Kevin Baconness as Shaw. You want to see yeah, that he dude was get good. fucking killed. Um Emma Frost was there. <laughs> yeah that, that's the this best is way. the second example of her just being in a movie i think just so they can say emma frost was in the movie except for this time they have way more boob in it than previous yes that's true um yeah mystique didn't make a whole lot of sense because she's like waffling back and forth like is charles right or is uh magneto right mm -hmm. but like as a viewer it's kind of hard to, to empathize with that because it's like well Charles didn't throw a bunch of nuclear rockets at people. <laughs> so, yeah. You know. and, and the other thing that it kind of doesn't help Mystique's case is that we've seen three movies with Mystique. And I want to say between all three movies, she has maybe like, what, 10 sentences of dialogue? If that. And all of a sudden you're going to try and like convince us like, no, she was actually like the pet of Charles Xavier this entire time <laughs> yeah it's which like nothing suggested that in the old movies yeah or like the weird thing of like so you're also gonna tell me that old ass magneto boned down with <laughs> mystique when she was like <laughs> at that age and they were just kind of cool with each other i mean granted to them they have maybe the most positive uh idea of a uh of a broken relationship where they're still friends with each other like yeah we had sex when he was not looking like this <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good now yeah i i can't tell if they because I, I have no idea how old mystique is in like the comics i have no clue i assume she can make herself look like whatever she wants so it doesn't matter she could always look like she was 20 she's basically got that tsunade power yeah pretty much but like it comes off a lot creepier when you go back later and it's like ian mckellen <laughs> yeah. and he's like barely able to walk and you're like oh god yeah imagine <laughs> oh yeah. you know not to make fun of Mr. sir ian mckellen he's a, no, wonderful he's a great man. actor absolutely like huge respect to him but just the idea of like what if they were actually rated r and there was a sex scene between the two um, yeah like what if they were still a couple that whole time <laughs> yes it would have been uh it would explain why mystique continue well no it doesn't <laughs> it wouldn't no, it would no, just be really no. weird Mystique uh, was just there for uh, nerd cred in the first three movies anyway, so... 
Yeah, and to show the effect of like, whoa, look at her Kirby-like powers. <laughs> I don't think Kirby is the right one. Are you sure? Because I'm pretty sure Kirby has a similar power, except for like Mystique doesn't, Mystique need doesn't to have eat to eat anybody. Yeah. <laughs> no, which is a flaw in her power. So imagine if Mystique had to eat everyone <laughs> and then press down B, or if she could throw them up and turn them into stars. Like that'd be a way more interesting character. It would be a much better power. Yeah. Uh, and then this is kind of the start of the movies where uh, Jennifer Lawrence got like really famous. I think it might have been off this movie, and then uh, the Hunger- I think it might have been actually the other way around, where Hunger Games blew up. And was then, Hunger Games first? No, it was. So this movie came out, but then Hunger Games came out during the in between times, and it, there was a certain feel of like, oh shit, Hunger Games is blowing up, and we have Jennifer Lawrence. Right. Yeah, yeah, that'll come into play a lot more in the next movie. <laughs> yeah, it's it certainly does feel that way. Like maybe it was a case of like they were trying to like, well, we need more. Our female characters aren't up to snuff, and so we need to raise up one of them. But also, Jennifer Lawrence is real hot. So what if we kill two birds with one stone and just raise up <laughs> Mystique? Yeah, that pretty much covers it. Um, yeah. Man, so many of the characters in this movie were not memorable in any way. No. Like, remember that Satan guy that was, like, Nightcrawler, but Satan? Yeah, but his father, but then that gets retconned in this movie. Like, in the comics, that's his dad, and then Mystique's his mom, and then I don't know, I guess they decided not to go with that (laughs) in this movie. Yeah, Um, I guess not, because he's just there to be Satan. He he looks exactly like Satan. It's kind of crazy how much exactly like Satan he looks Yeah. And then and he they, just and they like, could have, the the, the fine the fucked up thing is that they could have done something with his look where they it's similar to like the Nightcrawler story of this person looks demonic, but then he like he wasn't though like like Nightcrawler the the reason I like Nightcrawler so much is that he looks like a demon but then deep now na- deep down he's actually a very religious person who's actually very nice but because of his outwork out like his look people judge him for. Uh, they judge him like he's actually a devil. That's like not the case at all. And they could have done a similar story with him where because of the look of a devil that he has, he's like shunned from everyone. But nope, he's just there for like the bamf. Yeah, he's just there to teleport and be a dick. So I guess anyone that judged him was right. Yeah. There's also <laughs> he also has a scene where he's just like fucking dropping people from way up high. <laughs> and just yeah, he like him. teleports and then grabs them and then teleports up in the air and drops them. He's basically the cheap Mortal Kombat move into a character. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh, and then you had guys like Cyclops' brother that has Cyclops beams, but out of his chest. Yeah. And I feel he was also a case of like, well, it's we can't have Cyclops, but here's his brother. You guys have been wanting Alex Summers, right? And it's like, <laughs> yes, but it's the Gambit problem all over again of like, I don't think you understand why I wanted to see this character i would love to see him interact with his brother some yeah be... in ways that we actually care about instead of just yeah like he's just here but they also uh, they at least get to use his the the joke of his name which is uh what is it cry havoc and let loose the dogs of war <laughs> which i think at one point someone literally says cry havoc and he <laughs> fucking shoots out his beam <laughs> I mean, they had, like, like Banshee was in this movie, and he was about as interesting as you'd think he would be. You, he gets a fear of Magneto, which is funny. That's, like, the one good thing about him, I'll say. Uh, but yeah, most most of the movie was the big four of Charles, Magneto, Beast, and uh, Mystique. Yeah. Because aren't, aren't, like, there's, like, a vague romance-ish kind of thing with Beast and Mystique. Am I making that up? No, you're not. There is. And I, I skipped over it because it, like... So, the running theme of this entire movie is characters not being able to say the right thing. There's, like, you know, like, that when you're playing Persona and you have, like, three options, and one is, uh, I love you, you're a great person, the other one is, die, you shithead? Every char- <laughs> Every character in this movie picked, die, you shithead. Because it's literally, like, uh, like the worst thing you can imagine. Like, so, uh, when Beast and Mystique are talking to each other, he goes, like, well, when you're normal, we can hang out because you're pretty when you're normal, but not when you're fucking blue. 
And then she goes like, well, thanks for that. Thanks for the motor killer. I'm going to go bone down with Magneto because he has no problems. And then another case is when Charles is trying to make his case to Magneto as to why he should not kill the soldiers. He literally goes to his Nazi, like, he may as well have just, like, said it to the mark on his hand to remind him. But he says, literally, they were just following orders. (laughs) <laughs> and Magneto may as well, he didn't even need to give an example he should have just given him a slow finger and then unleashed and she should, like at that one point Charles made me side with Magneto because I was like no you're right kill those fucks <laughs> following orders my ass god in hindsight that really is like the most catastrophically stupid thing you could have said yes. to a holocaust survivor that is on the list of things to say why it's why you shouldn't do the things you're doing. Don't quote the shit the Nazis said. <laughs> he may as well yeah, have just was... like said to his face, like, you know, Hitler was a wonderful artist. <laughs> like that would <laughs> that would not have de like qualified that would not have uh stopped the situation from happening at all. Uh de escalated. Yeah, yeah that was go. not another problem that i think this movie has is that it has a huge lack of like standout scenes it has like maybe two or three Mm -hmm. that i think are really good i think the the early scene where magneto's mom is killed is a good one Mm -hmm. uh magneto killing shaw is a good one yeah that's real good and then uh when magneto inadvertently paralyzes charles is a really good one a lot of you know this movie would have been real good if they had just kind of like it would have it's already real good. It would have been excellent if they had literally just kept with the theme of Magneto and Charles. Like yeah, the, I, I feel like they mm-hmm. they had a good thing going with those two. Yeah. But they didn't want to step out of like, well, this is still a superhero movie, so let's have a massive superhero squad fight. Yeah. And I think it's mis they like there was a lot of misguided because they're also like in the period where they're kind of like inspirations come from because you know charles is very much the uh martin luther king let's talk this out we'll protest in silence but we will stand true and then xavier is the uh malcolm x you like just, nah let's fucking kill these you just people. said you just said charles is one and xavier is the other one <laughs> my bad i have magneto <laughs> who is eric Mag- yeah my bad i'm <laughs> it's been a while yeah no, uh, but yeah, yeah. The, he's the other. The other side is Malcolm X, and there could have, there, there could have been more clash of ideals. But I never felt like there was enough of that. Yeah, they kind of had these moments where they like would squabble a little bit, mm-hmm. but then some character would be like, "Hey, we have to do the plot. We have <laughs> to go do the plot, and we have to go right now." And it's like, "All right, I guess I'll go watch you guys fight on boats instead of have any sort of actual thematic struggle at all." <laughs> that's true uh yeah and uh, here's another thing i just kind of want to mention about the movie because i thought it was really funny the guy who plays xavier who is his real name is james mcavoy there you go the second mm-hmm. he got the role he completely shaved his head and then he showed up and said and they told him like we actually need you with your hair <laughs> so <laughs> that did happen and then he was like well shit and then i think for the next movie <laughs> They did it to him again, where I think, like, they made him, like, switch between balder hair. Like, there's, like, constant, like, switching of hair with him. Uh, uh, isn't that, in the, I think that's the third one. And the second one, he has the, the same hair the whole time. Oh, that's true. He has the long hair the whole time. Yeah. Uh, another thing I actually kind of like about this movie is that it follows with its 60s style. And I, that's the thing I like kind of about all the movies, is that there's at least they try and keep to their theme of like hey this is the era and this is what it kind of feels like because it's like okay yeah 60s things were uh there's a certain like dumb dumbness to the way charles feels which is very accurate to how people thought in the 60s where they felt like oh man love will get us all the way there and then it all comes crashing down on them once the 70s start and i like (laughs) and i like that the 60s that's definitely this kind of charles and uh, I thought that was cool. I mean, this is, I think it was a pretty good uh, X-Men movie. And obviously there's a lot of problems with it. I'll still I'll say it again. Real angry that in this movie about mutants and being prejudiced in the 60s, 
they kill the black guy and the Latino lady turns evil. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so here's the problem with X-Men movies when you can't use any of the cast of the old X-Men movies. Mm. Is you really start hitting the point where you're like, all right, we need a cast and we need it to be characters that people like and that's kind of how you get the Havoc situation where they're like, people know who that is, let's put him in the movie but then he's not there for any reason that anyone wants him to be there. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely one of the... It's the shining problem with a lot of the X-Men movies and it, it's unfortunately something that never really gets solved. Except yeah, maybe... Like, Logan, but that's because it that's focuses. Because... It's... Well, that's because Logan is great. Yeah, pretty much. That's because everyone really likes Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, and they were finally able to make a good Wolverine movie. Yeah, that God, that took them a while. But like, so I mean, you've got Magneto, you've got Charles. See, Mystique to me never really stood out as like a huge important. I, again, I'm not huge on the X Men comics. I watched the cartoons a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And she was always just kind of like mook number one to me. And that's sort of what she was in the old X-Men movies too, the first three. She was just like, I am Dragon to Magneto's Big Bad. Yes, exactly. Uh, and then in this movie, they were like, she's everything. <laughs> she's she's extremely important to all of this. Yeah, and it kind of like, it's like the old Arrested Development joke. You kind of look at Mystique and you go, her? Yeah, the, yeah. The, it's like, what? I don't fully understand it. Like, I feel like... But I think that might also come down to, I think, you know, except for maybe uh, Storm, not a lot of, like, well-written female characters in X-Men, as far as I'm aware. Like, you like Phoenix because she's, like, the super... She has, like, un control is the fact that she can't control her powers but in terms of actual characters i can't say anything about a character that i specifically like and i can look in storm and i can like look at things and say like okay i like storm a lot and the same thing kind of happens with mystique where i feel like they tried to give mystique something but for some reason mystique's overallness just was not able to let me accept her yeah so, like yeah i mean yeah I, i'm mostly just agreeing with what you're saying but like it it's hard to get behind the cast of these characters that are characters that, for the most part, are pretty big deal in the, in the comics. You know, you, you get really excited to see. Like, I think Emma Frost was literally just there to get tied up by metal poles in a bedroom so that people could be like, "Hey," <laughs> and then they'd <laughs> never see her again. And that's true too for all the movies. This is the last you'll ever see of Emma Frost. It's the ready tradition of X Men endings where a character says, "I can't wait to join you forever," and then you never see them again. Never again. <laughs> Never again do you see this woman. And, like, Banshee. Like, who the hell gives a shit about Banshee? I mean, I don't give a shit about Banshee, I'll say. But I think that he has enough history with X-Men where, you like, the idea of, like, okay, he's kind of like the <laughs> bootleg angel. <laughs> he really is, pretty much. Uh, angel for a movie where they can't use Angel because they've already established that he is a useless senator's son. Yeah, and he was the and he's the X Men episode they got from that one uh, internet video about Juggernaut. So he he's got that going for him. That's true. That was his episode. <laughs> so those are the two things I know about Banshee. Yeah, and I mean that's pretty much it. it's a good movie uh, that feels a little bit too. I don't know if processed is the right word because that sounds kind of douchey, but I'll say kind of weirdly bloated but also like it doesn't feel like let me what's the best way it feels like a real good cartoon episode of x-men where i feel like something like x2 and logan feel like some of the best like uh ideals from the comics put into a movie and able to like shine this feels like it was a like a summer event type uh story where you're just kind of going in for, like, the the fun. and You're, you're going not... in for your limited edition Yu-Gi-Oh card when you buy the ticket. Exactly. When you buy this, <laughs> you get the Pyramid of Light, and you, and you get uh, 
that fucking other card I can't remember from the Pyramid of Light. Uh, you get your special Jirachi, which is a foil, and that's cool. Yeah, I could see that. It it feels. I mean, it it's definitely not the worst of this trilogy. No, no, it's not. I think I like a lot of people. I think there's a good number of people who don't like it, and I like it a lot. So. Yeah, it's weird because I don't dislike this movie at all, but I I wouldn't go out of my way to watch it again. Yeah, I can understand that. I I my I used to have higher praise for it until I rewatched it. So I think back in its day it was much better. But then well, now that, that I think that's the effect of X3 was right before this and then Wolverine back to back. Yes, that was definitely a big help. And I guess after seeing Logan and then going to first class, it's you do not get that same feeling. No. Let's just say. No. Not even close. But points for it for getting out of that terrible rut. Yeah, they they did save it pretty hard right there. Yeah. Um so I guess that takes us to where they the next movie where they save it so hard that they make the old movies not exist anymore. <laughs> Which is honestly it needed to happen. <laughs> it it's literally one of my favorite things about Days of Future Past, which is what we're talking about now if uh-huh. somehow audience you have not figured that part out is uh the fact that it's literally like a comic book where they're like shit Captain America needs to not be dead. So let's just fuck with the timeline, and now he never died. And it, much like a comic, the movies have gotten completely, like, ridiculous. Because you have to remember that this Charles, who is unable to walk, is different from the Charles at the end of the Wolverine movie, where he was bald, looked like Patrick Stewart, and walking. Yeah, so, okay. (laughs) So, uh, Days of Future Past opens in an apocalyptic hell future where the sentinels have killed everyone because this is the first time they've ever been good at what they do ever except for in marvel versus capcom 2 that is also true (laughs) the two times sentinels have ever been useful is the beginning of this movie in marvel versus capcom 2 and early marvel 3 but he got over nerfed and then he was not that good yeah Uh, (laughs) but so then it then it's it's the old cast in the future so it's like uh Wolverine, it's Ian McKellen's Magneto, it's Patrick Stewart's um, Charles. Charles, and then Storm, who like didn't age at all, is it's also like, there. Yep. It Even accurate. Wolverine has like gray hair now, but somehow Storm I, didn't age. I think that's just a comment on the fact that Halle Berry has not aged. That's true. She hasn't aged a day since Catwoman. That's that's the that's the reward she got for doing that movie. Exactly. That's the uh, the the curse of what the devil that she made when she made Catwoman. <laughs> and so they meet up with like uh, I guess it's like another set of mutants that has uh, Shadow Cat and Bishop. I think Bishop for some reason. I think it's the first time he's been in one of these movies, hasn't he? Yeah, I think the the reason that the, he I think he's the leader in it, which is kind of a callback to. I think Bishop's entire story thing is that he's a future guy from that time where he has, like, I don't know. It's complicated. Yeah, but, like, this is another example of an extremely popular character that a lot of people like being, like, an extra. Yes, yeah, he's definitely an extra here. Yeah. So the Sentinels follow them, and they're coming to attack, but uh, for some reason Shadowcat can send people's brains back in time. Mm -hmm. I don't think they even really touch on how she can do it. She can just do it. Yeah, she just kind of can do it. (laughs) Yeah, she can just do it. And so you find out that they... Somehow they got uh, Mystique's DNA. Like, she killed uh, Tyrion Lannister. She shot him. Yeah, and then uh, angered all the Game of Thrones fans. Yeah, and then they got her, and they got her DNA, and that somehow let the Sentinels copy all mutant. But you really got to watch this one not worrying about it too much. Yep. There's a lot of shit that, like, even as I'm saying it, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, but yeah, so they're gonna send someone back in time, but like, they can't. She can't send them too far back because their brain can't, like, their brain can't handle it. So Professor X was gonna go, but then she's like, you can't. And so Wolverine was like, well, I'll go because I make the most money. Uh, mm-hmm. So he gets sent back in time, 
and then he goes before to find... getting a warning from J Xavier, he's like, it was my darkest oh, time. That's true, I didn't have my powers, and then Magneto was like, you also will need me, which turns out, <laughs> didn't. <laughs> what? Charles really should have put him to the side and said, don't listen to him. <laughs> you Do really not. don't need Magneto. He was a real dick. He was a huge asshole back then. Uh, yeah, so he says you're going to need me too for reasons that seem to be completely incorrect as the movie goes on. I don't know but, why he fucking says it. That, I can't, you know, that was my one problem with the movie. But continue, continue. <laughs> for my the real movie. reason they needed him is that they needed Michael Fassbender in the movie. Yeah, he was like, the, Logan, that... Logan, you're going to need me too for our box office potential. He, he showed his penis in shame, Logan. <laughs> you need me on the team. <laughs> so... So he goes back in time, and uh, he kills, like, some gangsters or something. I don't actually remember what they were there for. I think they but were it's guarding just a... the daughter that he had sex with. And... That he had, yeah. And it was just a fun little scene of Wolverine getting to Wolverine people. Yeah. And then he's walking around, and he tries to find Professor X, and I think that he pretty much just does, because you don't need to worry about how. Uh, I'll also say that when he steps out, it briefly turns into a 70s exploitation film in the way yeah, that he's just Yeah, where he's got, of... like, the jacket, and he's just, like, walking down the street. Yeah, it may have well... I, I didn't really like that scene, though. It would have been better if they put, like, a, a Shaft-style song, where it's, like, Like, Ooh, really funky Logan. music in the background. Yeah. <laughs> As he's walking. Yeah, so he goes to the X-Men mansion. I, I guess that's how he found him, because he knows where it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's like, hey, I need to find Professor X. And then it turns out that he can walk still because he's using some kind of serum that that cures, lets him walk. That cures paralysis. <laughs> it cures spinal injuries. <laughs> so it takes away his ability to read minds, so he can't use his powers. But uh, in exchange, he can walk again somehow. Mm -hmm. Again, don't worry about it. Uh, and they're, they're trying to get him to find Mystique so they can stop her from killing uh, Tyrion and therefore starting the Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, and then, so then, God, see, it all kind of blends together after he meets them because they do a lot of shit really fast. Yeah. So, I think okay. next they break out Magneto. I think they get Quicksilver first. Yes, they do. Yeah, they go and they get Quicksilver, who is pretty cool in this movie. Um, he's an only child in this movie because of licensing rights. No, he isn't. He has a. He has a. His sister's there. Is she? Yeah, but she's like a little kid. But it doesn't okay. really make sense. Well, but... it's not Scarlet Witch either way. Yeah, it, it's it's she. It's her name is Wanda though. Is it? I don't. I don't even remember them saying that. I could. You know what? I think I watched like a weird extended cut. Oh, uh, did you get like the director's cut? Maybe like the version I saw also had I think more. I want to say there was at least one or two more fuck yous, but I don't... I just I could have swore they mentioned the sister, but either way, it doesn't really matter. She's not a character. Yeah, she's just there for that one little nod, I guess, if she is there. Uh, so they get Quicksilver because they need him to break him out, and they hatch this elaborate uh, plan because Magneto is in a prison cell underneath the fucking Pentagon. <laughs> Where you keep all your terrorists. Yes. Uh, so they... They sneak in, and they have a weirdly elaborate plan for, like, 70s technology. It's actually a pretty cool, like, borderline heist scene. Uh, and then Quicksilver shatters all the glass and rains it down on top of Magneto and kills him. Because falling glass is extremely dangerous. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> no, uh, of course, it's a movie, so he obviously, it just bounces off of him. Perfectly and uh, they okay. get... Yeah, they get him out, and they have the Quicksilver scene, which everyone knows what that is, where they get shot at because they have fucking glass guns in the 70s <laughs> with yep. glass bullets and then there's also a scene where magneto's like uh he's like playing coy with charles he's like uh don't don't worry i'll follow you my psychic friend no need to go in my head and charles is like fuck off and yeah <laughs> and then he's like okay charles stop playing around <laughs> and he goes like i don't have my powers what and then the quicksilver scene happens yeah and then they uh oh yeah because he's like you can stop all these guys with your brain powers. And he's like, yeah, I can't do that. And he's like, oh, shit, we're all going to die, except for Wolverine. Yep. But then the Quicksilver scene happens, and Jesus, did they make Quicksilver really overpowered in this movie. I kind of like that they've, like, you know, usually in DC, they try and make Flash seem not that overpowered. Uh, Marvel has decided, fuck that. <laughs> he's actually... Okay, but Quicksilver is not Flash tier of, like, no, broken in the comics. No, he's not. But also, like, I feel like... Uh, Maybe this is also my experience from, like, watching Flash TV is that every other time it feels like 
you guys are purposely not making Flash seem that good. Where X-Men, because he's not like a main character, I guess, they are more like, no, we're just going to indulge the fact this dude is really fucking fast. Yeah, so I mean, he's like running on walls and he's moving bullets that are barely moving. Also not giving a shit. <laughs> like, yeah, zero it, shits completely. Uh, um, it, it, his character is, I like this version of Quicksilver better than the Avengers 2 version. Uh, I do too, but to be fair, the Avengers 2 version was just there to die. So Yeah, didn't see that one coming. Yeah. Uh, so this scene actually raises like a million questions as to how Quicksilver's powers work. But again, don't worry about it too much in this movie. <laughs> yep. Because not, not a whole lot makes sense. It's just a fun ride. Uh, So they get Magneto out of there, and no one sees him, I guess, on the way out of the Pentagon. No one's like, is that the terrorist that we had underneath the Pentagon (laughs) walking out? It's enough Uh, time has passed. Yeah. And so they get out, and they get on a plane, and then Magneto wants to pick up the newspaper, and Wolverine, like, stops him with his claws for no reason. And Wolverine's, or Magneto says the dumbest line ever, where he goes, hmm, imagine if those were metal claws. (laughs) <laughs> and then he looks at wink, the wink, audience. Looks, yeah, looks directly into the camera and goes, "If only." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay, so they're trying to find. Uh, they go to find Mystique now, and because Quicksilver has just shown how extremely useful he is, they immediately leave him behind. They and do not bring him to anything else. <laughs> the kid has school in the morning. He can't <laughs> go he around. Can't, yeah, he can't help. Uh, so they get him out, and then. Uh, I forget how they find her. Doesn't Magneto just find her? I think so. I think that's kind of how they do it. Yeah, he, like, they go, or no, they meet at first, they meet her up, like, at, she's in the place going to kill him, and they go to where she kills him, because I guess Wolverine knows where it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then a fight breaks out, and Wolverine becomes incapacitated, because, again, he would be extremely useful in that situation, so they had to get him out of it. And it becomes Beast uh, fighting Magneto, and Beast beats the shit out of Magneto in a, a pretty good fight scene that I like a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's warranted, you know. that, that guy, Even though he technically, that was not his girl, that was still someone he had a crush on. So he's like, I now have free reign to beat on you. Guess who's going to yeah. beat on you? Yeah, because like, Magneto decides the only way to stop her is to kill her. And uh, Charles doesn't want to kill her, and Magneto does, but Charles can't stop him because he still doesn't have his fucking powers. Uh, and so then he's like, Beast, go beat the shit out of him while I try to get Wolverine to be useful again. And then they all, uh, Mystique gets away after uh, Beast beats the shit out of Magneto. But, but then he- Magneto still wins in the end because he's Magneto, so he has to win. Mm-hmm. And then Magneto goes and gets his helmet so that Charles can't fuck with him anymore. Because breaking out a massively evil terrorist to help you might have not been a very good idea. But also he kind of doesn't need it because again charles is walking and doesn't have his powers so i think he just really likes that helmet yeah it's more of a fashion thing yeah uh but then i don't remember what the character's actual name is that's why i'm calling him Tyrion lannister it's trask right yeah it's trask or something yeah yeah so uh he he's like look at all these crazy mutants we totally need these sentinels and the the president of this movie is Richard Nixon, which is amazing. <laughs> Anytime Nick Nixon is able to show himself, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm I'm all game for anything Nixon. <laughs> um, and so he's like, "All right, we get the sentinels." And uh, so they're they're making these sentinels. And Professor X is like, "All right, I am not contributing at all, so I really need my powers back." So he stops taking the walking serum. Uh, but can still sort of walk, I think. For a little bit? Yeah, for a little bit. I don't think he gets the wheelchair back right away. Yeah, it takes but, a while. Uh, yeah, so he gets... Magneto's like trying to find uh, Mystique, and Mystique just grabs him in like a random airport. And he's like, how did you find me? And she's like, you taught me well. And they leave it at that completely. <laughs> <laughs> they don't... Nothing else comes out of it. She's like fucking Assassin's creeding it. Yeah, like literally she comes out of nowhere with like a pen to kill him with. And she's like, no, I'm still totally going to shoot that guy. So uh, Magneto puts... Jesus, this is going to hurt me to explain. So he puts railroad tiles in the Sentinels so that there's metal in them. Because I guess they were plastic or something beforehand. Yeah, they're made out of some weird space tech shit. The some was shit pop- that he can't fuck with, yeah. Popular in the 70s. Uh, and so he... <laughs> 
Jesus Christ. Okay, so he picks up a fucking, like, a baseball stadium. <laughs> he does. He does. And he floats it all the way to this meeting where they're unveiling uh, <laughs> the Sentinels for the first time. And he drops it as a barricade, even though there's, like, hundreds of entrances to sporting arenas. Hmm. So it's not a super effective barricade. Uh, and then they're like, oh, shit, this guy is a fucking mutant guy. We should use the Sentinels on him. And then he's like, nope, I can control the Sentinels because they have metal in them, which is fine. I can buy that because he can make them move the way he wants them to move. But then they show up to stop him, and he looks at the Sentinels, and he goes, do what you were made for, and they just go start fighting Beast. <laughs> Even though what part of Railroad Tile makes them voice commandable by Magneto? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shit was yeah. different in the 70s <laughs> <laughs> yeah so wolverine tries to bum rush magneto and surprise surprise it doesn't go super well because even apparently without the metal claws wolverine still can't do jack shit no. he gets uh stabbed up by a piece of rebar which looked super cool the first time yep. and really shitty every other time you've ever seen it <laughs> did you rewatch this movie for this I, scene I, I did i did did you watch that scene and really look at it uh yeah there's a lot of weird thing about the effects like it's really bad yeah like like x x3 plane in the beginning bad <laughs> it's really bad yeah uh is this around the time when magneto launches his ass away from the movie this is exactly when it happens yeah he impales him on the rebar and then he picks him up and he literally hurls his ass out of the plot and when i remember this moment extremely well because when i saw this in theaters the entire place erupted in laughter yeah it's incredible again the effect is terrible and it also looks stupid as shit so he's got wolverine and he's picking him up by the rebar that's in his body and he just kind of flicks his hand and wolverine just flies straight backward and i think he does the classic cartoon of he does yeah he he's yelling and it it like it would have been perfect with a Team Rocket sparkle. Yeah, that's what if I was going to say. They should have put a sparkle right there. Yeah. And then he just lands in, like, the fucking Hudson River or something. Yep. Where he's effectively out of the movie now. Yeah, so he is now removed from the relevance of the plot for the rest of the movie. And then the Sentinels aren't there, and then Magneto's like, why do you hate us? Is it because we drop baseball stadiums on your meetings and threaten to kill you all the time? Is that why you don't like mutants? And then the little guy, Trask, is like, oh my god, there's a mutant in here somehow in our safe room. How is it? And then it turns out Mystique was Richard Nixon the whole time. Yeah, Mystique was Richard <laughs> Nixon. <laughs> Not, the, Richard Nixon was there, and then like she snuck her way in there somehow. And then, well, this is before she turns into Nixon, actually. She's, uh, t uh, she, I think she's um, Stryker? I don't know, she's someone. But then they find her out, and then like... Magneto opens up the thing and is getting ready to kill or do something and then it's revealed like Nixon going out and doing the don't kill these people only take me and then you realize like there's a real good scene of like Nixon would never say this and then they look back and you see Nixon looking at Nixon going what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> that's not and me and she pulls a glass gun that she had out and shoots Magneto in the fucking neck <laughs> yeah, real good accuracy. <laughs> yeah, it's extremely impressive. Uh, and then she goes to kill him, too, with the glass gun, even though that's the entire, like, she has a hero's moment. Mm -hmm. And Charles is like, don't do it. Don't kill him. And she's like, God damn it, fine, I won't kill him. And then she pulls Magneto's helmet off so that Charles can, I guess, freeze him or stop him from being evil or whatever. Mm -hmm. And Beast gets Charles out of the rubble that he's trapped under because he's trapped under rubble because that happened earlier. It's a really not a great scene. No. And uh, Magneto's like, you know, if they arrest me, that they'll put me to death for being a massive terrorist. I and can't Charles survive like, in prison, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> they called me the bitch. And then Charles is like, I know they will. And Magneto's like, all right, then I'm leaving. And he just leaves, and they just let him leave. He just flies off. Yep. Peace. He just flies away, and then they're like, all right, that's right, that's been resolved. And then they keep cutting back to, like, the other X-Men fighting the Sentinels and just, like, getting comically murdered by them. 
Yeah, that there's a there, you know what? They do a good job of showing that like you should not fight a sentinel cuz these motherfuckers will kill you. Yeah, but like it's in borderline funny ways. <laughs> it is in extremely hilarious ways. Like when Iceman turns into ice in that one point and then they chop his head off. Yeah, no, they like melt his body and then cut his head off. Yes, and then like the girl who has like portal powers, they like compute, they fuck with her portal shit and they stab her through the portals. Yeah, they stab into the portal and then somehow kill her because for some reason she opened a portal because her powers also seem super broken. Yeah, except for when she dies. When she fucking dies. Or Colossus, who they literally just pick him up and rip him in half. Oh, yeah, they do, like, the whole, like, classic, like, not, not classic, like, like when they used to do it in old days when they would put him to horses and, like, tear him yeah. apart. Yeah, they rip him, legitimately just rip him in half. And it's like, oh, this is gruesome. <laughs> yeah, but, like, it's still a PG-13 movie, and he's made of metal, so there's not, like, any blood, and you're just like, hey, <laughs> he fucking got ripped in half. Yeah, he does. And Storm gets, like, dramatically stabbed in the back because she didn't get any lines in this movie. She didn't. I think it was because Halle Berry was pregnant at the time. I think it was probably because Halle Berry made Catwoman before this movie. You know, to be fair, she made Catwoman before a lot of these X-Men movies. <laughs> I guess that's true. I, I She did not do jack shit in this movie, though. No, I think it's literally because she just... Either they didn't want to pay her more... <laughs> For a voice line, or she was pregnant, whichever one. But yeah, they're they're killing them all, and that's what's happening in the future. Yeah, but then when Mystique is like, "All right, I won't kill him," and you're like, "Okay, fine," and then the future's fine. But see, that's how time problem, works. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I was about to say. In that, all of them dying in the future should not be possible for it to run concurrently with the things that are happening in the past. That's, that doesn't make any... If it if, if she isn't going to shoot him in the past, the future should already be fixed. It's it's It runs on the similarities of the famous time travel video game Blinks the Chime Cat, <laughs> where time is like a weird anomaly where the past and the present can happen at the exact same time. Yeah, it actually does work that way. Because in the present, they're all like dying, and they're like, shit, I hope Wolverine convinces her to change the past. But like... That should. <sighs> it should have already changed the second that he went back. Yes, like it, whether or not he succeeded, uh, like every little thing he did should have technically changed everything. Which is the problem. Immediately, it should have changed. Yeah, this is why you don't do time travel stories that are one set in the future and the other one set in the past. Because no matter what you do in the past, it should automatically affect the future. Right, so, and see, they mm -hmm. could have avoided this. If they didn't do the comical cuts of all the X-Men trying to buy time. Yeah, and showing them, like, rescuing Rogue because they needed, like, a tag team partner for Kitty Pride at one point. <laughs> I think that was in the director's cut. It was it? Okay, so that... Rogue that, is not in the theatrical cut of the movie. So in my version, like, there's an entire part where Magneto and someone else, I think it's Iceman, go to save Rogue. And then, like, they save Rogue at the cost of, like bobby and this is also revealed how the sentinels know where they are is because they follow them from that point on but yeah they totally do a tag team where like rogue comes in and is like uh bobby died saving me and she's like you bitch and she's like don't worry i'll take over from here <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just looked it up and it literally says uh rogue was to be rescued by magneto and xavier to provide elder characters a mission therefore something to do however the producers felt it was a subplot that did not in any way service the story i can tell you right now it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't so they they took it out uh and then the actress who plays rogue that i think has only been rogue and never did anything else say I, she did not mind that her scenes had been cut which of course you didn't i mean that's just because she has so much respect for the X-Men. She's like, you know, if my part <laughs> sucks, do what you gotta do to make the X-Men great. And I appreciate her for her efforts. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, But, like, so... If they just didn't show that, right? Like, if Magneto or Wolverine just, like, woke up and the future was just right and accurate, mm -hmm. then that would have been less... Yeah. I don't know about offensive, but less obnoxious. It would have been more jarring than when he, you see the... Okay, so I think, and, and the movie, because we're pretty close to the ending, and then we'll talk about the movie. Because yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the end of the movie. Uh, Magneto flies away, and he's like, well, fuck you then, Charles, you're a dick. And Charles is like, nah, fuck you. And they're not 
cool with each other at all because they have to be enemies for the next movie. And then Magneto, or Wolverine, I'm sorry, is drowning in the fucking river, and he's been drowning in the river for like 30 minutes. <laughs> and, and it's uh, cool because he's Wolverine. Yeah, somehow he's still not dead yet, even though they've established that Wolverine can totally drown. Uh, then Stryker gets him, and they're like, we're totally going to experiment on this guy. But then it turns out that it's Mystique? But yeah, and then... <laughs> so... You know what? It's revealed it's Mystique, <laughs> but here's the fucked up thing. He still has the claws. So either Mystique... <laughs> I actually thought that this was another heel turn by like Mystique. She's basically the big show at this point because she's like, I'm good, I'm bad, I'm good, I'm bad. And like, you'd think that that would mean that Wolverine actually never does Weapon X, but that's totally not what happens. It turns out that she actually... Yeah, the next time you see him, he's in the fucking... Weapon X program with like the helmet and the claws and shit. Yeah. So why the fuck was why so, was she doing this? Yeah, you could have literally just like shown. Actually, have it be Striker. Yeah, unless they were doing like a callback to the Michael Jackson Thriller video, <laughs> where it was actually <laughs> turned out that he was a a cat person the entire time. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, extremely confusing. Yeah, because. And, it, it's it's like the setup for the next movie too cuz her the eyes flash to Mystique's eyes and then they that's the end of the movie. Yeah, well no, then the movie continues cuz he like Wolverine is Oh, okay, you're right. That, that's the last scene of the past crew. Yeah. Then he wakes up and it's all the crew of the old movies and Wolverine's like, "What the hell?" and they're like, "Yeah, don't even worry about X3. That didn't happen anymore." <laughs> And then, Jean is still alive, and Cyclops is still alive, and everyone's still alive. And it has and, the greatest cameo from your boy, uh, Kelsey Grammer, as Beast. Yep. <laughs> he's back. Where he literally just walks by, and he's like, oh, hi, Logan. Logan. And that's it. And you're like, that's all I need. <laughs> that's all I need from you, Beast. That's all he did. And then, like, Wolverine's like, oh, my God. Jean's alive, and he like goes to stroke her hair, and Cyclops like, "Hey, bro, still a dick," and that's their interaction with one another. <laughs> he may, he may as well just said cock block, like well, okay. <laughs> for the record, his... Cyclops is not in the wrong in that scene. No, he's not. No, but he's still an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. And then there's also a moment where uh, Xavier realizes, like, "Oh shit, it's actually the mind of the Wolverine that was from the other past." He's like, "Oh, thank God." I can now reveal to you your past. By the way, this is pretty fucked up because this <laughs> implies that the Wolverine that was his friend has literally now just disappeared. Yeah, he he got like erased from time when the other Wolverine came back. Yes, this is grim because now like it's pretty fucked up when you think about it. The entirety of a man's existence is gone. Yeah, and I mean, Charles remembers... The seventies because it's that Charles. It's mm -hmm. it's the young Charles aged up. None of the other characters remember the bad timeline except I guess for Wolverine. I guess he's the only one now mm -hmm. that remembers the the wrong timeline. So like, why? Where did he go? Where did the current Wolverine go? Yeah, it's kind of like when uh, at the end of Back to the Future when Marty returns and it's like oh, man, I got cool parents now. And you go like, dude, that's not your parents. Yeah, it's exactly like that. Where it's like, oh, my parents are awesome. And I got this car. And it's like, no, dude. I got a bitch in life now. That's End the, the other Marty that doesn't, that doesn't <laughs> exist anymore because you just erased him. Yeah, it, it's super puzzling. Like, it, that, it, it, you know, that's something that time travel movies in general have to deal with. But yeah, the, then that happens. And then Abin Sur some man man oh, messes God. with the periods yeah the some dude that no one knows who he is because he looks nothing like apocalypse yeah uh is fucking with the pyramids and then they're like all right there you go yeah which have kind fun. of have fun it's like thanos all over again have fun looking that up on the internet it's actually kind of exactly like it i <laughs> it's remember like 100 percent thanos yeah i remember there was one i think it was at the end of the thor movie where i think they revealed something and then, like, the, the you know, at the, one of the end credit stingers, and nobody knew what the hell they were talking about. And then Jace yelled out, look it up! <laughs> <laughs> like, he named the thing that they were talking about, and just like, look it up, come on. Because he was the only one kind of excited for it. 
what was the thing? Fuck, I don't remember now. Like, I don't remember the end credit thing of Thor anymore. I just remember that it was something that at the time people wouldn't know what it was because, you know, back then things were different. Yeah. It's not like now. People weren't excited to know about Marvel back then. Yeah, it's not like now when Guardians of the. Spoilers for Guardians of the Galaxy 2 happens, then you see Adam Warlock's cocoon and everyone's like, oh shit, it's Adam Warlock's cocoon. And then you're like, who the. Do you know who that is? And then they. Yeah, do do you know who that is at all? (laughs) Do you know anything of his work? Come on. But yeah, it's basically a similar scene to that. So yeah, that's Days of Futures Past. So that movie makes no fucking sense. No, it does not. But I think it's still pretty enjoyable. It It's extremely fun if you're like, well, that's a thing that happened. Yes, exactly. If you don't get too concerned about it, it gets a lot better. In terms of, like, uh, th- I mean, this is also kind of a problem with doing, like, time travel stuff, is that everyone wants to do a time travel story, and then no one is actually ever equipped to properly tell one. Yeah, that's that's a very good way to put it. So, like, time travel, obviously, no one knows how it works, because, well, maybe someone does in science land. Uh, I believe everyone follows the uh, the sound of thunder theory, which is if you step on a butterfly, everything changes. And right. Then socialism wins, I think. Correct. Um, Nazi wi- Nazis win in a sound of thunder <laughs> when he kills a butterfly. <laughs> uh, so it's like they just kind of did whatever they wanted with like a lot of it, mm-hmm. which is fine. But it really like. It starts getting in your face with how little sense everything makes. Like, they they don't stop. Yeah. Uh, I'll also say that this is something where they tried to adapt the comic in a way. But the comic was, I want to say, built differently. Where the comic first showed you the fucked up future. And it showed you, like, Sentinels, like, killing the mutants. And then Kitty Pride sends herself back. And then you never see the future, and I think and you never really kind of see the future that she comes from from that point on. It just assumes yeah, you that... Never, you never go back to it. Yeah, exactly. And so at that point, you're left kind of like going like, well, hopefully this changes it, but you don't actually know. By showing the future uh, picture in picture with the past, it kind of makes it feel like... It, it creates a really weird feeling. Yes. Uh, okay, so like... It's one of the, it, I don't even know how to explain it. It feels almost like so disjointed by the way that they present the story that you're trying your brain is automatically trying to say these things are happening at the same time because they want to create this sense of like oh shit is Wolverine going to make it in time to save everyone. But then your brain is also like that doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Yeah. Like here's the thing that doesn't make any sense at all when so the reason that like they lose a little bit of sight of Logan, like why he isn't able to be fully in there is because at one point he sees Stryker and he remembers that like, oh shit, Stryker did a lot of bad to me. Uh, and he starts freaking out. And in that brief moment, his old self comes back and is confused about why he's there. Like, and when you think of it in context of like, so that should automatically it 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 basically creates like a weird safe point. It's like Wolverine was plugged into his old self and then he briefly lost control of his controller and was unplugged and then he quickly replugged it back in and he was back to where he was. Yes. It was like a TV basically. That's how their time mechanic worked. So when the TV was on, he was able to control it, but when they unpulled the plug, the old thing came back and like when he came back everything had changed. But see, the problem, too, is that it's not just the time travel that doesn't make any goddamn sense. So, like, the Sentinels make no sense at all. Because Mystique's power is in no way the thing that they can do. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So Mystique can change her shape. She's a shapeshifter. That can, she can make herself look like other people. I don't know if she can be stuff other than people. I've never looked it up. But her, her power is looking like other people. Like a lamp? Yeah, I don't know if she could be, like, a dog. I don't know. <laughs> She's not, like... Uh, no, I don't think so. She's not, like, an anamorph. 
Yeah, she's not an animorph. She can't, like, turn into, like, a weird billy goat. Yeah, but, like, so... Then they're like, they got her DNA, and now the Sentinels can use her power. And you're like, that's fine. And then they're like, no, because the power is that they can now uh, copy all mutant powers. And it's like, wait, what? So somehow, like, they must have put other shit in there, but they didn't even try to explain it in a way that made any kind of sense at all. All you could really tell was that uh, te- that J- Lannister had killed a bunch of her mutant friends. And yeah, I don't and know, she maybe... was really pissed about it. Yeah, and then maybe inside their DNA was stuff, but like that that's never clear how a teleporter, a butterfly woman, and a banshee man, and combined with Mystique makes Captain uh, Planet of Power is able to track down all the mutants. Able to, to make any power that they want. If anything, they would need Charles's brain, or like something in Cerebro, something. Like it would make more sense if they tried to get Cerebro, because Cerebro can do that like yeah i I don't know it they were just like we need to make mystique really important and this is what we were talking about in the last movie where jennifer lawrence was like i am super fucking famous now and they were like shit she really is we gotta (laughs) we gotta do something with this and so mystique becomes like this key figure in the safety of the universe like her actions decide everything but they can't make it happen in a way that isn't the worst thing ever. Yep. And it's a real shame because this also suffers from the same problem of kind of first class where there's too many juggling stories and it would have been much better if they would just focus on one thing instead of like spreading it out throughout. Yeah. They do a lot of like, Oh shit. Trask is making robots and Quicksilver is totally Magneto's kid and like all this other shit. And it's like, none of that is essential to the actual story. We already know Trask is making robots. So we don't need to see him do it. We know that that's happening already. Mm -hmm. They've established that in the shit future where everyone's dying. We don't need to have all these scenes of them being like, Mystique, come on. And she's like, no, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to do it. Like, they they have all these scenes where all the characters can't ever seem to decide what they give a shit about. And they use that to replace any actual, like, conflict in the story. Because the conflict of the story is just convince this girl not to murder someone. That's not an extremely exciting two and a half hour movie. No, it's not. No. So they have all this like, like for some reason, Magneto just goes full apeshit terrorist for like no reason. Yeah, it's never revealed why he does that. And also there's a real, there's, that makes you question everything that Magneto says. I think at the time when Magneto says, you're going to need me. Uh, he forgot that he was a dick during his early days, and that he thinks, yeah. like, no, I'll understand. Don't worry. I'll totally come around. I'm a good guy now. Yes, I'm a good guy now, therefore I always had the capability of being good. Just find me and get me out of the prison, please. Yeah, prison really sucked, so if you could just get me out of there. Yes. And it doesn't work out. Like, I don't understand. I don't know, understand why Wolverine listened to Magneto. Yeah, at what point? Well, no, because see, he says that, and then he looks at Professor X, and Professor X is like, it's cool, get him out. I forgot, Professor X actually vouches for Magneto. He does? He, man, he does. He's, he's like that friend that vouches for their friend, even though they know they're a fuck-up. Yeah, he's like, no, no, dude, it's totally cool, it's totally cool. Yes, yes, don't worry, Magneto is an excellent exterminator. <laughs> he's, yeah. <laughs> he, will, he will get our job done. Yeah, it turns out, no, he just fucked everything up royally. And the thing is, Magneto totally buys into the whole future thing. Because at first, like, Professor X is like, oh, fuck you, you're not from the future, whatever, you fucking freak, fuck you. Yeah. But Mag- Magneto is totally you. on board. Yeah, Magneto's like, oh, you know what, sign me the fuck up, I've been waiting for this. Let's save the fucking future. But then he's like, you know what, let's fuck the future up worse. I have an I've- idea. I think the problem with what Mystique was doing is that she was not extreme enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Allow what now? Hear me out. What if I killed him instead of Mystique? Yeah, if Mystique is gonna kill him, and what if instead of just killing him, what if it's me and I just kill everybody? Yes. How can they protest if they are dead? (laughs) It's perfect logic. Yeah, this flawless science. Humans will accept us if you kill every human that doesn't accept us. And if they don't accept us, it's fine. They'll all be dead. Yeah, they'll be dead and there won't be a problem. 
I can't hear you complaining from inside the crypt. Yeah, this this is by far like the most mustache twirling supervillain Magneto has been. Yeah. Because he feels like he's evil just for the, the fuck all sake of being evil. It really doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like because his logic this... is real flawed. Yeah, like okay. God almighty, it's like in all the movies where he's a bad guy, they at least devote a little bit of time where he's like, look, shit sucks, but I don't want all my people to get murdered. And you're like, all right, you know, okay, you're a dick, but I get you. And this one, he's just like, hey, you know what would be great if every human died? Yeah, it's a, uh, it, it, it feels misguided in what Magneto actually kind of stood for. Not to say that Magneto, you know, he is a killer, but it's a killer that he's always able to kind of justify himself because he's doing it for the betterment of his kind. And I guess in his mind, if there are no, you know, to be fair, if there are no humans, I guess mutant kind is perfectly fine. But don't forget the fact that I think mutants can fuck other mutants and then make a human. <laughs> yes, I believe that that's correct. I, I, I don't know if that's 100% true. I have not studied up on my, uh, my quirk biology, but <laughs> I believe that that is right. I've read some stuff, <laughs> and <laughs> it tells me that when they get down... Uh, there's at least a chance. It's like when you're Pokemon breeding and there's a chance of good IVs and bad IVs. There's always a chance for you to get the worst IVs and get a human. And get a not mutant baby. Exactly. And then you toss it into the wonder trade. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So, like... Mm, excuse me. It all keeps coming back to the fact that, like, they have these characters, they have nothing for them to do, but they still need a gigantic cast because that's like the the thing for X Men movies, is that their cast is outrageous. Mm-hmm. And this is also coming out around a time that Marvel movies are starting to get a really big cast. And they yeah, think... Marvel has been kicking a lot of ass around this point. Yeah, and X Men's like a ton like, of it. Yeah, and X Men's like we have a large cast. <laughs> Our cast is bigger than their cast. Check it out, X Men most cast. Yeah, pretty much. Because, like, first class was, like, right around, I think, Thor-ish time. Mm-hmm. Where, like, Iron Man was huge, but people were like, that's just, that. there's no way they're going to be able to replicate that across an entire universe of movies. <laughs> so no one really gave a shit yet, I guess, mm-hmm. about Marvel. It was just kind of like, oh, Thor was, eh. you know, Thor was an, an acceptable movie. Yeah, I'll bring me another. I love that line. Yeah. Uh, and then they, uh, Days of Future Past came out, and they were like, shit, guys, Marvel is extremely popular. We only have the X-Men. We can totally do what they're doing, though. We're going to make two universes of movies. And we're also going to totally say that all of our shitty movies don't exist, so please don't review them anymore. Oh, man. And they, you know... I think that's the best thing this movie does, is that it kind of retcons all those movies. Is that it gets rid of the old movies? Yeah, like, th- those old movies really were putting a hamper on everything. Yeah, I, I, you know, coming into this one episode that we're doing right now, I was like, man, I'm glad we got X-Men Origins and uh, the Wolverine out of the way and, and X3 because now we can talk about good movies like Logan and these movies. But then, you know, rewatching these movies, you're like, oh, Jesus. You have to always, like, the, this is a problem of, like, you have to always remember that Logan is the is a, a fine-tuning point where they were finally able to kind of get one super right and it's a lot of like stumbling and falling up until that point yeah i think and i think you know what because logan takes a lot of like hits from old man logan and to be fair to days of future past it does try and adapt its comics where it's its own thing and also the other thing so at least they're trying like new kind of stuff where you can i can see like okay i can see the idea of vaguely referencing comics but not fully devoting into them because you know that's co- that's marvel stuff and we don't need to be 100 percent true to marvel hell marvel isn't 100 percent true to the damn movies they name and it's nothing like the comic book series they're based off what if we do the opposite where we say like this invokes a specific comic book style from the x-men but we make it our own thing and that's definitely what days of futures past feels like and it, it stumbles and falls a lot but i still think that it's able to accomplish that and the beginning of that kind of idea is like a tiny like seed and it eventually blossoms into the tree that's able to be cut down and made into logan fair enough i, I can sign off on that 
yeah, the the X Men movies always seem really good when you watch them the first time. Mm-hmm. You're like, shit, that was that was great. I'm glad I saw that. And then you go back and you watch it again, and like that initial hype period has gone away. Mm-hmm. Where like that that honeymoon period of like that was really cool. And I, I don't know what that says because I know I know some people think like if you watch it the first time and you have a good time, it's a good movie, and that's all that's all there is to it. Whereas some people will say, oh, you know, if it doesn't hold up, it's not a good movie. You know, everyone has a different opinion of what a good movie is. No one will agree on that. Sure. But like, these movies are so like up there when you first watch them, and then you watch them a second time, and you're like, how did anyone write this? Yeah. They're kind of like bananas, where you can't eat a second banana. <laughs> that's that's sim- true. That's similar to the X-Men, except for, again, Logan, which I watched twice and held up perfectly. But all of them, and X2. But a lot of them are kind of like, when you see it again, you kind of go like, eh, it's not as good as I first remembered. Which is yeah, a similar like- feeling of when you eat a banana and then immediately eat a banana right afterwards and you go, I regret everything. Yeah. Not a huge banana guy either way, but yeah, definitely. I enjoy a good midnight banana. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a pretty good uh, analogy for this movie. It's a it's a midnight banana. It's a <laughs> yeah, the, of the X Men movies. It's the midnight yeah, banana. It's the, it's the midnight snack banana of X Men. It's yeah. a good movie. It's a fun movie. I would definitely recommend seeing it if you haven't seen it. Just and, you know, don't give too much of a shit about it. Uh, I'll also say that this is another case of like I think it's I think we'll get into it a little bit more because the next movie also has one but this is the first time where so I remembered Quicksilver and I liked them a lot but I forgot who the actor was and then I saw it again and I was like holy shit it's that dude who's always in American Horror Stories and <laughs> I realized like I really like him in, the, in that TV show because he's usually able to play like really silly dumb characters and just like dedicate his everything to it and I'm actually kind of happy how he does Quicksilver because he's basically doing the same thing where he's like, so what is this character? He really likes video games. He's super fast, doesn't give a shit. Mm, I can play that. Don't worry. <laughs> give me give me some white hair. So yeah, he, he was a really good Quicksilver. Um, the casting in general in the, the first class and on X-Men movies is really good, I think. Yeah, they do, again, because they bring back Charles and... Uh, Magneto's Eric. They bring back God damn it, I forget their names. James McAvoy and Penis Shame Guy. Michael Fassbender. Thank you. <laughs> this <is> Michael Fassbender. <laughs> who are excellent actors and uh Jennifer Lawrence is also to be fair, when this is a case of like whenever I see a Jennifer Lawrence movie the first time, I always say like, God damn it, she only has one face and then I see it a second time and I go, Okay, she's slightly more expressive than I remember. And that's definitely happened through the watching of these X-Men movies is that I go like, because for some reason in my mind, Jennifer Lawrence just has the Hunger Games face where she just kind of, you know, that face in the poster. I just assume all her characters are always like that. Okay. Well, to be fair, she does kind of have one. She has like one and three quarters faces. Yeah. But I feel like it's weird that she always has that face because like when you when you see her actually like out and about, she's nothing like that. So it feels yeah, like Yeah, I I feel like that's just her action movie face. Yeah, I guess. You know, like to be that's, fair. I'm badass with this face, I guess. I don't I don't know. It's the same thing. This is the same face Bruce Willis has whenever he goes in to do a die hard. <laughs> they kinda like, uh yeah. I'm the back. I'm cashing in on this movie face. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the I'm cashing in on this series. Yeah. So any final thoughts on Days of Future Past? Uh watch it. Watch it one time and don't watch it anymore after that. Uh, it's a really good movie, I think. I, it's another one of those movies where it's like, that was that was good. I probably won't go out of my way to ever watch it again. Yeah. yeah and I, that's not necessarily a testament to its quality, because I'll watch Pirates of the Caribbean 4 if it just happens to be on at, at like 2 in the morning. <laughs> I'll totally watch that, and that movie sucks. That's true. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's just something about it that... It was good, and I objectively can say that was a good movie, but it's not clicking with me. Yeah, no, I get, I get what you feel. There's definitely, I get what you feel. I get what you mean. Uh, there's certainly movies that, for some reason, you're able to see a lot, even though you don't think that they're necessarily super good. And for some reason, like X Men, I can say like I like this movie, but I don't need to see it a bunch. 
I'm I'm fine with the one time or two times I've seen it. And maybe in six years from now, I'll see it again and laugh at the effects or something. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right. So let's get on to the final movie and finally bring an end to this because it's X-Men Apocalypse. <laughs> and get ready for this one because I kind of don't remember a lot. I'm going to have to look into Wikipedia. To be fair... It's okay that you don't remember a lot, because a lot's not very great. Yeah, fair enough. So anyway, remember Blue Man from the other, the ending of the other movie? Well, that was Alban Suar, and they show him in the beginning. He's in ancient Egypt. He gets betrayed, and he's entombed. And then his four lieutenants die protecting him, and then he awakens back in 1983, and he believes humanity has lost his way because he was a very greedy king, apparently. And he wants to destroy the world, and he is able to learn language by talking to uh, basically Kid Storm, even though that's not her name at the time. I think it's like Oro Monroe or something. That's what her actual name. Okay. That's what Wikipedia says it is. So let's just go with that. Uh, So he picks her up and now he's a part of her team. And then uh, Wolverine is not Wolverine. Fuck me. Uh, they this Wikipedia article. You find just, yourself wishing for Wolverine <laughs> as the movie goes on. Yeah, this says Raven, but it's Mystique is investigating an underground Fight Club, and she and they discover like the angels there, and angels different from the last time you saw him because now he's just fucking up people in this underground Fight Club. And he's also he, way older. Yeah, way older. So I guess like at some point, because because the timeline has changed, he sexed up his father, sexed up his mother way sooner. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is all post retcon now. Yeah, it is. Uh, so uh, Angel's about to fight Kurt Wagner in which is Nightcrawler and maybe the most like geekiest little like nerd form you've ever seen Nightcrawler in. That's <laughs> he's like he's like it, I'll say it's it's in his most beat upable look. He looks like he deserves <laughs> like an ass kicking or two. And I yeah, love I, that. I love Nightcrawler and I like what they did with him, but he really does look like a nerd who's just like, I dropped my books, Angel, please. Don't do anything. So anyway, she rescues Kurt and through Kurt I'm gonna use this Wikipedia's name for them, so if you get confused, I'm sorry. She rescues Kurt. Wikipedia not, is for some reason using their real names, not their yeah, super. I don't know names. who the fuck edited this article but anyway she rescues him but also kurt heard angel's wing somehow i want to say he hit into the electric fence that was around the thunderdome that they were fighting in the and, uh so and then they show cal then she goes to caliban and says like i need to send this kid to america and she says okay and this is where you see caliban S- by the by is the albino guy that kills himself in logan yeah, not played by the same character. It's just completely like, different actor. Yeah, and so, but this is, I guess, his first appearance. Uh, so she, Caliban, is able to sends her, sends them to America, and then during this point, uh, Aben Sir comes up and transforms Angel's wings into metal. And then around this time, Scott is manifesting powers and he's shooting optic beams, which is in a in a in a scene that's similar to I guess when you find boners for the first time. He's kind of in a <laughs> he's kind of in a bathroom. But he shoots his load out of his eyes, <laughs> and a guy was there watching it. He goes like, "Uh, I guess I'll leave now." <laughs> so Alex takes uh, him to Xavier. And he's kind of blind walking around, and he gets buddy-buddy with Jean Grey because they're both freaks, because he has... Oh, man, call ended. <laughs> I'll start up this recording again. Apologies. Technical difficulties. Our time back has uh, made us very uh, rusty. All right, so where the fuck was I? Oh, yeah, he was caught... Jean master- Grey and Cyclops are flirting. Yeah, so they're both freaks, so they get... <laughs> this. <laughs> They're both freaks, relatively speaking, compared to the other mutants, so they get along well. And then around this time, uh, they show... I, I forget, but Moira Ma- Taggart is somehow back in this movie after after she gets her memories back because she saw Abon Sewer coming back. And also Raven brings in Kurt, and now he's part of the, the, the fun group. And also I think around Jubilee is also around. Like, yeah, they never she's... mention. She's just kind of you know she's there it doesn't really make sense for her to she be there really but like, i don't think she contributes much at all other than going like giving a look to the audience and going like it's me jubilee fireworks remember <laughs> never... me from the cartoon in the 90s 
yeah, remember my dazzling powers of fireworks? Anyway, not to make fun of her. Uh, She's actually this, super broken, so just FYI. Yeah, you know, aren't we all on the inside? <laughs> Speaking of super broken, we go to Eric, who is fucking Magneto. Not <laughs> that's how drug. Uh, Eric Lishner, as Wikipedia calls him. And he's actually been having, living his wife, and he's been doing good. Everything's going fine until the military uh, attempt to capture him and they kill his entire family. Because apparently if you're in the military in movies, you are bad at your job. So they kill his family and then they're like, that was a smart idea to kill the family of the man with magnets because that's always worked out. And so <laughs> yeah, it's been really great every time we've done it. Yep. So he kills them all and then Abin Sur shows up and says like, uh, I, I, you know, I don't remember what happens first. I think he then goes to his place of work. And then just, like, goes, like, which one of y'all fuckers snitched? And he kills them all. And then Abin Sur comes up, and then he's like, let me take you to Auschwitz. And then let me... Auschwitz. Uh, Auschwitz. My bad. Apologies. <laughs> let me take you to Auschwitz. <laughs> and let me Did make you... you... fucking say, let me take you to Auschwitz? <laughs> Is that really what you just fucking said? <laughs> Jesus. That's dark even My for bad. us. He says, let me take you let me take you to the place where your powers first came back, which is in <laughs> Auschwitz. Because that's where it happened. He doesn't it's just the, it's just, no, it's just the way you pronounced Auschwitz sounded exactly like off switch, which is extremely oh, dark. Oh this is terrible. Anyway. Yeah. Jesus. So he remembers he's angry and so he kills all of Auschwitz. <laughs> and then uh Abin Sur is now like cool <laughs> let's get the guy who knows Cerebro so we can find all the mutants and force them to be on my side now that I have you my new four horsemen of the apocalypse uh they with his uh new powers he captures Xavier and then I think they try and blow up the entire like X mansion and this is where the weird this is where like Abin Sur is like I don't know why he's killing an entire, like, outfit full of... I guess he doesn't actually do it because Alex fucks up and accidentally gets everyone killed. I think that's what happens. Yeah, he, he like, blasts... He tries to blast the plane because they're kidnapping Professor X. Yeah, and then what happens is that um, a giant explosion is happening regardless. And thankfully, around this time, uh, Peter Maximoff, better known as Quicksilver, is just so happens to be around because he's like, I'm going to join up... <laughs> That Xavier, 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> and I look exactly the same. Yeah, I, though I think it's been 10 years. It's been 10 years, and I think it's time I finally did something with my life. So he's around, and they do basically an extremely long shot of him, like, like saving everyone in the X-Mansion, uh, throwing people out the windows. It's <laughs> it's real silly. And um, he saves everyone except for Alex, who was at the exact point of the blast. And so he's not able to be... He's fast, but apparently he's not fast enough to stop that because he was just too close. He also Which kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because the explosion is barely moving while yeah. he's... I think it's more likely that Quicksilver's a fuck-up and he didn't notice that Alex was there. Probably. It's, it's kind of like an inverse of the situation where, like, he's kind of... Uh, in the first one, it shows that, like, oh, no, he's cocky and he's able to save everyone. And this is a case of, like, mm, no, he's he's actually untrained. He needs to be a bit better if he's going to be able to stand up to this threat of a giant explosion. Read it as you may. Point is, <laughs> Alex is now dead, and uh, Scott, or, oh, fuck, man, Cy Cyclops, there you go, is real angry about this. <laughs> also, for some reason, Stryker shows up and starts capturing everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, the only thing he does in these movies. Stryker... Is he, he just shows up and starts kidnapping mutants. Stryker, the ult ultimate opportunist, everyone's like, hey, man, are you here to help us? He's like, fuck no, and he captures all of them. <laughs> And then, um, so Kurt is able to teleport Scott and Jean inside, and they're like, okay, now teleport us out. And then Kurt's like, I can't! I can't use my powers! So now they're just transported with them to the Weapon X facility, and then once inside, they uh, try and save everyone. And then they unleash Weapon X, which is Wolverine, and then Wolverine has a uh, real weird scene with Jean. <laughs> Where he's kind of looking at her, and I guess this is supposed to be like, oh no, even back then he really loved her. But it's really weird because, again, Jean is very young. Well, I think the, I think the implication is that she's like 
fixing his mind. No, she fixes his mind, but he also looks at her in a way that is inappropriate for a oh, man yeah. his age. All right. <laughs> Maybe it's just because he hasn't seen, he hasn't felt a woman's presence in a while and he can't see her. Maybe that's. You know, maybe that's how they justify it. But either way, it's real weird because Wolverine is like 127 or something. He's like far too old. Yeah, he he's from like Victoria. He's like Jonathan Joestar's age. Yeah, basically. Imagine if Jonathan <laughs> Joestar attempted to pick up on G. Gray. It would be horrifying. Oh, but what if the Weapon X was Jonathan Joestar instead? No. <laughs> That's a different kind of movie. Anyway, so now I guess they free the original mutant guys who I don't even remember. It was Hank, Raven, Peter, and Moira. Those are the people who were kidnapped. So now it's time to kind of save the world. And I forget, Eric starts shifting the magnetic poles and he's trying to destroy the planet, which is a very... In terms of all the ideas, it's a very bad one. And Xavier, uh-huh. like, uh, Abin Shua try and tell Xavier, like, hey, tell everyone how awesome I am. And then Xavier basically does, except for at the end, he goes, um, fuck you. And then he, he looks up directly at the eyes, like, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's like actually exactly what happens. <laughs> like, yeah. So, now they attempt to rescue him, and also, while they're rescuing him, uh, they try and convince Magneto that he shouldn't destroy the planet, and it takes his son going up to him, who at this point he kind of reveals, like, that's my dad. But then he doesn't tell him, you're my dad. He's just kind of going, like, I got a sister and, you know, family is cool. You got family, I swear. And then Magneto's like, I probably do have family somewhere. <laughs> and so I guess that's enough to make him kind of stop. And then they're able to stop the... I guess there's, like, a procedure that Abin Shua is doing to... Uh, Xavier, where he's gonna transfer his soul into his telepath, into his telepathic he's, yeah, body. Yeah, he's gonna, like, I, I think one of his powers is he can, like, tra- it, it's literally the exact same thing Xavier does at the end of X-Men 3. He basically has the villain power from uh, My Hero Academia. He basically has that power, except for he also has the power to put his cell, put himself inside someone else's body and take their mutant powers. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he's basically All Might and All for One in one person, except for bad. Yeah, just just evil. Yes. Um, so they're able to stop the body transplant, Kurt is, but not before Xavier loses all his hair. Because apparently the <laughs> it was so... Too... <laughs> it's a side effect of the process. <laughs> yeah, that's why like he's, I'm sure, is also bald. And apparently all his subjects just lose all their hair, which is, I guess, the dumbest uh, showing of how a character got their trait ever done in a hero movie i'll say yeah it can't just be baldness it's i got it from a telepathic demon yes exactly and the most powerful telepathic demon anyway uh they put all their powers together after angel is defeated because angel angel gets defeated but then everyone at this point i guess says fuck up and sure let's fight against him and they attempt to like take him down and then like he fights xavier in the astral plane and then it's similar to the ending of um, Dream Warriors, the Freddy Krueger movie, where they're fighting in like a dream place, and Xavier is like, "Haha, this is my dream, and I can power overpower you here. I can walk here." And then he like tries to do a psychic blast, and then Apocalypse or Robin Sure just goes like, "I'm still strong even in your dreams." <laughs> so, at this point, I think Xavier starts getting like a friendship speak from like a disembodied voice. I don't remember, but this makes him go like, "I need help." And then he tags teams in Phoenix, which is uh, Jean Grey's evil form. And through the power of psychicness, she's able to use her Phoenix form and completely destroys, uh, takes him out of his mind and then completely destroys his body as well. And like she incinerates him for good. She like literally blows him up. Cyclops escapes because she wasn't helping. And she's like, I guess I'm done here. Goodbye. And yeah, then, I think it's funny how the only time you mentioned Psylocke was that the part where she leaves because she wasn't helping. Because that literally sums everything up that she did in this movie. Yeah, it looks like she's helping at one point, but then it turns out it was Mystique. So really, she does she does nothing, uh, except for like fight and then do nothing. But anyway, she Xavier, kind of fights for like a second. Yeah, but uh, Storm ends up joining on the good side because I guess she was good all along, and so that's fine. Um. 
then like they're all good and Eric decides to not take Xavier's offer to help teach in his school and then for some reason uh, Quicksilver doesn't tell him that he's his son and then they build I guess they build like training sentinels the Hank and uh, Raven do to train the new X-Men which is Scott, Jean, Oro, Kurt, and Peter which is all you know that's not their names but whatever and then in a post- well, it's their real names. It's yes. just not their hero names. It's not the God damn it. Anyway, not the a, right names. In a post credit scene, Men in Black in suits visit the Weapon X facility, and then I, I don't know. There's a lot of vague shit that basically tells you Mister Sinister is coming up. I just remember that's what it is. And so the movie finally ends, and that was this movie. And boy, is it something else. So, Zen, I'll let you start off because I need to take a breather. This movie sucks so bad. <laughs> I I really hate this movie. This is at least as bad as X3 for me. Yeah, and it's similar to X3 and then, like, there's, like, one character who I really like. And even then, they don't really do that much except for one scene with him. Which is again Quicksilver because he's his character is basically the exact same as the like, scenes the, even the same. Yeah, the scene like everything about him is basically the same, except for this time like his shtick doesn't work as good. So he tries to, at least tries to be a little bit better. And at one point he gets his fucking legs broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like punching Apocalypse, and po- Apocalypse is like, all right, that's enough of that shit. And then he breaks his fucking leg. Yeah, I mean, there's a there was a part of me that was like. What if Quicksilver actually just saves the day and he's like the new leader of the X Men? <laughs> Everyone heard like we love that one scene of him, and then they're just like, "Fuck it, let's make him beat the toughest guy we have." But no, it doesn't go that way at all. And yeah, the- it. And this movie, like, it tries really hard to be like cheeky. Like, do you remember the scene where they go to watch the fucking Empire Strikes Back? Or no, they were going to watch Return of the Jedi. Yes. And they're like, the third one's always the worst, because X3 fucking sucked. Yeah, I think but that's actually didn't... just a talk on how bad all the three, except for Logan, how bad all three, ver- like, the, the ending of the X-Men movies are, and threes are always very bad. Yeah, but see, they didn't, when they wrote that line, they probably were like, ha take that, Brett Ratner. But then, this is the third movie in the series, and it sucks. Yeah. It's similar to it tries to be that scene from the first Kickass movie where the where Kickass is talking to his friends and they're like, "Well, you know, it really sucks that in the Fantastic Four movies that Galactus wasn't in the big purple headed shit." And then Kickass's notion is that like, "Well, they couldn't give him that because no one would take it serious. You have to be different from comics to movies." It's like that scene, but with none of the self awareness and making fun of itself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it comes off as like they thought they were clever as shit, and it didn't work out at all. No. It, uh, that's kind of what this whole movie is like. Yeah. So X-Men are kind of, like, at its worst when it's this big, stupid, apocalyptic type event, because that's not really what they should be about to me. The like, X-Men are not the Avengers. No. And to be fair, like, Apocalypse is one of their big enemies, and there have been times where they've had to save the world but it feels like there was more build up to it it always felt like they at least tried to make it like character focused in some way like it, like to give an example during like the dark phoenix saga it wasn't the fact that they had to stop dark phoenix it was that they were trying to save their friend not necessarily save the world that would be a byproduct what they really cared about was the fact that g needed saving and in helping their friend they would also be helping the world when you remove that fact and you go well they're just trying to save the world it's just kind of you know not true to the characters i feel or like to what the x-men stood for yeah the x-men are not i mean they are a superhero team but they're not like a superhero team like no one's making the x-men sign fucking un papers all right that says you can't be superheroes like that's not what they're for mm-hmm. the x like i'm not saying every x-men movie ever has to be a social commentary because it doesn't have to be no but but the x-men just they're not globe trotting superheroes like what it, the 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 scene where mystique is talking to them and she's like you're not 
in training anymore. You're X Men, and it's like shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, it's not what that means. Yeah, they're the X Men aren't soldiers, <laughs> you know. Like, no, they're not. Like the X Men were always a group who tried to help people, and then they got shit on for trying to help. Yeah, like, the X Men are a group that wants equality for humans and mutants and they protect people from evil mutants to show that mutants can be good yeah and i guess that's vaguely sort of ish what they're doing in this but not intentionally it's just the fact that if to have powers you have to be a mutant in the x-men universe that's the only reason they've also kind of retconned the universe where now they live in a world where people like mutants so yeah i i I don't remember the exact reason. I think it was the whole mutant saved Nixon on TV was their reasoning. Yeah, and that's why, like, uh, now Mystique, in kind of like a meta commentary of how uh, I think Jennifer Lawrence also doesn't like the fact that she's now the main person of the X Men, is kind of going, like, I don't really deserve that spot. <laughs> like, that it shouldn't be me. It was kind of acting. Well, I think Jennifer Lawrence just doesn't like doing them at all. You know, to be fair, makes sense. Anyway. What was I talking about? Something about Mystique. Uh, so yeah, the idea of the, like Mystique is the is this character who never stood for any of the things that she's currently being hoisted upon. I think that's kind of interesting, but then they don't really... I don't feel like she ever kind of accepts that role, or it doesn't go the way that I kind of expected it to go. Like, And this is a problem of like having too many uh, running storylines at the same time, and it's probably at its worst here. Yeah, it's it's a problem that these movies have through all three. Where, once again, they they have all these characters that are just unnecessary. Like, they have the four horsemen of the apocalypse because they feel like they have to have them. Because it's just a thing that Apocalypse does when he's there. But mm-hmm. then, like, Psylocke, I don't even remember her speaking more than, like, three times. She doesn't speak a lot at all really no but they still they still give her all these scenes and 90 percent of it is just olivia munn being like i'm in a borderline swimsuit so thank you enjoy my presence yeah basically that's 100 yeah and like like little like angel is some kind of like british street punk Uh, it might not be british i don't remember he's some foreign street punk let's assume german because he's fighting kurt wagner all right we'll say german and he, for some reason, like, and then they try to make this big deal out of Angel, and they're like, oh, he's Archangel. But it's like, I don't give a shit about Angel anyway <laughs> in this movie. Like, you didn't do anything in this movie. And it's not like an overall Angel is a shitty character thing like it is with Banshee, because Angel's awesome. But, like, not this one. <laughs> they so, didn't do anything. Yeah, and I think the only one that they kind of come close to turning kind of evil is magneto but that's because we've seen that magneto and then we actually see his character kind of be like i'm kind of in a good place right now i don't really feel like destroying all of humanity and that's the first like i'm happy and then his happiness gets taken away because magneto is not allowed to be happy ever. yeah magneto doesn't get joy no and he's able to be turned into the dark side because you could kind of understand, like, I tried living Charles's way. And he says it to Charles as well. I tried it your way and it didn't work. So now I'm going to go back to my way. And I feel that's kind of the thing that's cool about the Four Horsemen is that they're supposed to be X-Men that we like. Like, in the original comics, when the reason Angel turns into Archangel is because we see Angel lose his wings and we see the fact that he's not okay, that, like, this thing that's been his overall identity is lost to him. And so when he gets the offer to get it back, he gladly takes it because it's similar to, like, this is all I was, that's all I ever know, I want it back, and I don't care the cost. And that's why it's sad to see him turn into Archangel and be who he is. And I feel like the movie tried to have that, but then at the same time, it's like, this isn't the Angel that that happened to. You just took a random actor. Yeah, you just took a guy, and then you were like, hey, his wings were metal. Yeah, and it's like, I don't... it's It's the ultimate sign of like you don't understand why we like these characters yeah you have absolutely no idea and like every single one of these classic uh, era X-Men movies just keeps throwing names in because they're like well we gotta people like this character like Caliban is a very weird one like I don't know where 
maybe he got super popular in the comics and I was just not aware. Mm, you know, I'm going to say right now, I've, I had not heard about Caliban until this moment. I'm going to guess that Caliban did not get super popular in the comics at any point. No, he may have been a uh, character that was in that uh, comic book like series and then they decided to like put their own spin on him or something. Who knows? Yeah, we'll go we'll go with that. That's fine. Uh but like like Archangel didn't need to be here. Nightcrawler didn't need to be here. There are so many characters that didn't need to be here and because they got put in for no reason, they just ate up screen time that prevented you from from enjoying a more fleshed out smaller cast. It also weirdly feels like a remake of First Class. A little bit, it does. Like, it's like, oh man, here they are, the first X-Men, and you're like, you guys made this movie eight years ago. Yeah, they already were the first X-Men a while ago. The only thing that's different is that now, for some reason, Xavier's like, no, we're not attacking other people for some stupid reason, even though he knows that they should have a strike force of some kind. But either way, like, it, it, it's weird. Like, there's too many, like... It's where the, the, the badness that usually is something you put up with with the like the other two movies finally overwhelms the movie. Yeah, there there's so much going on uh, all the time. And it's all... It, it's not like different characters interacting with each other in different ways. Like, there's not a Magneto Mystique and a Magneto Xavier subplot. Mm-hmm. It's that there's like a hundred characters all doing their own shit. And so it's like... Uh, it, I'm trying to think of a way to explain it that doesn't make like there that makes sense, but it's like there's so much going on, and there's all these different characters that have to do these different things that they never get time to like be a character. You know what I mean? Like they can't be themselves, and you can't just have a character world building moment where you're like, oh, that that's what this guy is like, and that's nice because they're too busy servicing the plot because they have to because they don't have enough time. It's kind of like, uh, it's similar to like your problems with the, in, up until recently, I guess, or maybe it still was a problem, of the Tournament of Power, where like, here's the overarching storyline, and now here's every other character subplot. Because yeah, yeah, the Tournament of Power is actually a good example for, uh, if any of you follow me on Twitter, um, I, I vented a lot of frustration about the Tournament of Power because I felt like it was a lot of wasted opportunity. Because you made this this battle royale format where you have all these universes and you have like Jesus, what is it like ninety dudes all fighting at the same time? Mm-hmm. And it's like, but there's no point to that. Like, there's one guy who shows up, and he's like, I'm one of the most powerful universe ten fighters. And Pickle is like, Yeah, hell's on grenade, you're dead. And he's just gone. We barely, I think we heard his name one time. And there's just all these characters that come in. And a couple of them get focused on, like, Rebrion just won't go away for some reason. <laughs> she is just destined to stay in this tournament forever. Like, she's probably going to win because that's how yeah, life her, is for me. Her, her and Frieza will be the final two. <laughs> yeah, probably. But, like, it, there's all these characters that I think would have been really cool to see do more things. Like, that guy who fought by making the doppelgangers and he spread his key between them. Mm-hmm. And so you couldn't figure out which one was him, and Gohan had to get hit, and that was how he was countering it. Was it whichever one could hit him physically, he would hit it back because it was the right one. That was cool as shit, and they fought for like two minutes because they had to move on. Because ultimately, this entire tournament is just to get Goku to fight Jiren. That's yeah. what it's for, and that's kind of what that the X Men movie feels like, where it's like why they're constantly like switching to other characters and they're instantly forgetting them because really at the end of the day you have to eventually get these people to fight apocalypse and then the fight with apocalypse happens and then it has uh except for like at least in tournament of power when jiren and goku finally fight it's really awesome and here when uh apocalypse and phoenix fight it's more like officer just kind of gives up it gets yeah burned. phoenix just shows up and mind you i think I, I don't recall there being any hints to her being phoenix prior to this I, I'm not 100%. I don't know if there's, she ever just like burst into flames at some point or something. But she comes in, and Professor X is like, uh, I really need you to fuck this guy up for me. And she's like, all right. And she like squeals at him. It, it's a very strange sound. I guess it was supposed to sound like a bird. She just should have just said, Caw! <laughs> That's pretty much what she said. 
Uh, and then he dies. And mm-hmm. that's the movie. There's, like... I guess the implication is supposed to be that they're going to have to deal with this Phoenix shit now that it's happening. Yeah. I mean, like, they've already said that they want to do Dark Phoenix next, and it just kind of doesn't... Who it, cares? I, it doesn't feel earned, because, like, I don't see Jean as a character. She's just yeah, the Jean catalyst. Is just Yeah, just a girl that was here to do this one thing so that she could kill Apocalypse so that now we can do Phoenix. And even though, you like... Mm-hmm. You didn't make me like Jean. Like, say what you will about X3. That movie sucked ass. Yeah. But at least you had two movies with Jean where you were like, shit, I like Jean Grey. Yeah, and she at least like had a kind of sacrifice moment where her original character felt like it was dealt with. And I don't feel like, you know, no offense other than the fact that I look at that girl and go like, holy shit, it's, I think, that girl from Game of Thrones. Do I ever go like, no, that's Jean. Like, I don't feel that way. No, not at all. And so, like, I, mm-hmm. go ahead. I was just going to say this movie has a lot of problems. It does. Uh, this movie at no point, like, I don't know. I can't think of a better example than the Tournament of Power. Because ultimately, the whole point of this is just to get Phoenix and Apocalypse to fight. That's all this is for. And all this buildup is ultimately, it feels like it's for almost no reason. Because, like, oh, he's going to take over Charles's brain. But, like, no, he's not. <laughs> Yeah, and then they go, like, the entire world is, like, devastated, and then they never show you, like, how are people actually handling it. Like, they show you in the moment, but once it's over, everyone's like, so how did this affect mutant kind? Are things okay? Are our entire cities yeah, gone? this like, movie you... does a lot of... Remember the Man of Steel controversy? Yes. With how the movie was pretty much just glorifying, uh, like, hyper-ultraviolence, and it didn't really do anything with it? Yes. Uh, this movie was a whole lot of that. Like, it's Magneto ruining the world, and there's, like, tsunamis and shit, and they're just like, that is a thing that's happening. And now they're gonna fight in a destroyed city. But, like, there's no... They don't really do anything with... And, like, okay, Man of Steel didn't either. But at least in that shithole Batman-Superman movie, they were at least, like, people are really pissed about all these buildings blowing up. And they kind of talked about it. Like, this movie doesn't even touch on it. No. And I have a feeling it's not going to touch about it in the next movie. Other it's than definitely not. Other than just going to be a throwaway line where it's like, oh, man, humans aren't as cool on mutants anymore. And then in the background, there'll be, st- like, Stryker with his snively whiplash mustache just twirling it and going, <laughs> yes. Yes, public opinion is turning against the mutants. <laughs> now I will win the wacky race. <laughs> But yeah, like, everything in this movie, and I think it all comes down to the fact that there's just too many goddamn fucking characters. Yeah. But everything in this movie just feels like it's there to push the plot to the next plot point. And I I know some people hate that kind of criticism of a movie because obviously the plot has to move forward. But nothing feels natural and nothing feels like it's actually the characters acting like a character. It just feels like at any random point, they just point at one of the characters and they're like, you do thing that progresses story yeah and then they go do it and like why is mystique the leader of the x-men never really explain never comes up no just it's because she's jennifer lawrence that's the reason she's the leader of the x-men in this movie and then like professor x can apparently uh like fist fight people in their brains yeah, it's, again, similar to the ending of Dream Warriors. <laughs> if you've ever seen the that amazing movie, you should see Dream Warriors. It's basically a better version of this movie. <laughs> yeah, this movie, like, these newer X-Men movies just have this horrible habit of, like, taking this really cool shit that you are like, this is fucking awesome, and not earning it in any way. And so it just comes off as rushed and shitty. Yes. It would be like, imagine, and obviously this would be crazy... But do you remember that scene in Indiana Jones where he just kind of like is preparing to fight this guy with the crazy sword moves and then he just shoots yes. him? Imagine yes. if in that scene they replaced him with Darth Vader. <laughs> and up until this point you saw Darth Vader and then Darth Vader just gets shot and dies and you go like, that's nothing. What? Like, that's not true to Darth Vader. I don't understand why you put him in this movie if he was just going to get shot by Indy. It's yeah, that's to- a lot of this. 
and like say what you will about Marvel movies. I know they're not for everybody. Uh, I like them well mm-hmm. enough. Um, they earned the universe that they built. Yeah, they did. They went through and they made generic ass Captain America movie, and they went through and they made dumbass Thor fights a robot. Because they needed to do that to get you to a point where you don't need to set up the characters in the movie. And X-Men is just like, you know what? Not only are we not going to set up the characters in the movie, we're not going to give them a pre-movie where they get set up either. They're just going to be here and exist and do shit. Yeah. And then the thing that's worst about it is that they always use the same excuse of like, I, I hate it because fucking Batman vs. Superman did it too. And I even as someone who kind of enjoys that movie for its craziness, I hate when they do this, is that they always use the excuse, well, it's for the fans. It's like, fuck you. You don't yeah, know. Yeah, clearly it's not because you don't know what the fans want. Stop using me as an excuse for making a bad movie. This isn't the 1980s where you could make a shitty Captain America movie or something, and then like yeah, just... and everyone would be thrilled just because it was Captain America. Exactly. We're not in those days anymore. We're not going like, holy shit, Shaquille O'Neal is Steel. I can't wait to see and support Steel. We're not in that era anymore. You're gonna have to do better and actually make a good movie. Yeah, and it's like. So they have some characters that are already set up in this movie. Like, I thought Magneto was great in this movie. Mm-hmm. He might be the only part of this movie that was good. That might be that might be extreme, but for the most part, he was the character that I like to see on the screen. Yeah, yeah, because it, uh, it actually felt like he was dealing with some shit. Yeah, and you already knew him. And then Professor X kind of didn't really do anything. No, he just kind of really just like... Says he was more or less just the damsel in distress in this movie for yeah, most of it. He's Princess Peach in this movie. Yeah, which is fine because Professor X only has but so much that he can actually contribute at any time. Uh, But then, like, Mystique has been a completely different character in all three of these movies. Yep. She is not, in any way, has she felt like a natural progression of a character. She's just been a completely new character that they just wrote in. And it's like, this is Mystique now. And it's fine, I guess, that's what Mystique is now. But it doesn't make any sense, and it doesn't feel natural or, like, I feel like I have to relearn her over and over again every time I watch these movies. Yeah, and it doesn't help that they're also, like, skipping ahead ten years at a time. Yeah, and then, like, you have characters like Mystique that you have to relearn. On top of, they drop, like, 12 new characters on you. Like, for no reason. We didn't need Nightcrawler. We didn't need... I mean, it's cool that he's in the movie, and he wasn't that bad. Like, I don't think he necessarily detracted from the movie. But he's just an example of a character that they were just like, people like Nightcrawler, let's get us a Nightcrawler. And then they're like, hey, what do we do? How do we make people like Cyclops? And they're like, flirt with Gene for ten minutes, and then that's it. That's his entire characterization, and then he's going to fight later. His entire reason for liking her is that he messed with her and was like, man, what a punk. And then when he gets his eyesight back, he's like, hello, I'm sorry I was (laughs) miskind to you earlier. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty much it, actually. I can see now that you're beautiful. <laughs> let's talk. Yeah, now that you're gorgeous, let's talk. Now that I can see your very pretty face, I want you to check out these cool sunglasses. Yeah, look at my awesome red sunglasses. <laughs> Do you think he has to wear those when he's making love? I would imagine. Well, like, actually, isn't it a thing that Gene can hold his eye lasers back? <laughs> That's a good question. But does I, he need I, to, like, focus on the, the act of love and then also, like, try not to die? That's some major stakes. Hey, man, sometimes maybe that's better. Maybe it's, like, uh, asphyxiation, but on an extreme scale. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God, if I stop thinking, you're just going to blow gonna my I'm going to fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah, that basically sums up this movie. <laughs> the sad part is it kind of does. Because yeah. it's like... The problem with this movie... I mean, I've said it a million times, we're not going to see it over and over again, but it's just pure chaos. And not in a fun way. No! Like, the last movie was chaotic as shit, but it was fun. Like, Days of Future Past is, like, just ridiculous craziness, but you're like, this is pretty sweet, because it's, like, mutants doing cool shit. In this one, you're like, this movie is a nightmare, (laughs) and I want it to be over, because I have no idea what's going on, I have no idea who's who, I have no idea why anyone cares about anything. Because all I know is that this guy is bad, and therefore everyone else wants to kick his ass. Yeah, and it's basically unearned, and 
they had to make sure the only way that they knew to make us make us feel that he's bad is that he turned Storm evil. And that yeah, pretty much. That doesn't even really stick because eventually Storm realizes like, oh, I could, I could just be a good person, I guess. Yeah, she's just like, all right, <laughs> I'll just be a hero. They should have just gone to Halle Berry because she basically still <laughs> looks the pretty same much, as you. Pretty much, yeah. They should have done the hat trick and made her look like she was just like that young. De-aged Halle Berry like they did with Iron Man and Civil War. Yeah, exactly like that. But throughout <laughs> the entire movie. <laughs> Why not? Hey, fuck it, yeah. It, at least it would have given you something funny to laugh about during the movie. It's true. And then I think it would have been perfectly fine. I think Halle Berry would have been happy to do it. She oh, I'm sure a- she would have done it. Yeah. I mean, she showed up for all the other movies. <laughs> Why the hell not? <laughs> yeah. That's true. Uh, okay. I think we're finally done with the X-Men. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So no, I so I think kind, the- kind of put it into like a Jerry Springer point. How do you feel about the X-Men franchise as a whole now? Um, you know, it's, it's a weird franchise because it has a lot of different directors. And I mean, the Marvel movies do too, so that's not necessarily a death sentence on its own. Yeah, but I feel like Marvel has like a plan for yeah, what they want. Yeah, the X-Men feel like they're watching Marvel and they're like, the Marvel's doing this really awesome shit and we have the X-Men and the X-Men are giant and we can totally do that. But they're not like looking into why it works for Marvel. They're just like, just fucking let's do it. So they just throw shit at the screen, and it's just sometimes it is really awful. And then when you get down, when they sit down and they take a director who knows how to make a good movie, they're like, oh, sweet, let's make a really good movie. And then they make Logan, and you're like, holy shit, that movie was fucking incredible because the X-Men are really cool characters with rich as hell lore that are, you know, people they really like these characters for a reason. But then sometimes you get, like, Brett Ratner, and he's like, wouldn't it be awesome if Wolverine uh, fought Magneto 12 times and got <laughs> thrown into a river? And then uh, if Jean Grey could turn people into, like, Dippin' Dots? Yeah, and then Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker come in, and they're here to solve the crime. <laughs> hey, I would that would have vastly improved uh, X-Men 3. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I would have fucking loved that if Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker showed up near the end to solve, like, a crime. And Jackie Chan has to have, like, an Asian a martial art fight. I was going to say Asian fight. A martial artist fight. An with... Asian fight. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I almost saved myself. With, like, another mutant, oh. that would be great. Actually, just make a movie where it's Jackie Chan fighting a bunch of mutants. Yeah, I would watch that. Just make Jackie Chan and X-Men. That's fine. That would have been better than X3. <laughs> Jackie Chan X X-Men. <laughs> it's not even like a character he's just playing jackie chan he's just jackie chan yeah he's not even his character from rush hour i don't want no trouble magneto and then he <laughs> fights magneto as he's throwing magneto, like, and he's holding a baby the whole time exactly and as he's throwing like platforms at him he's like dodging but then he gets hit a couple times he does like the funny wince face and he goes back yeah and he's like flipping over shit that, that he doesn't need to flip over the whole time exactly mark it up give it sell it to fox have yeah, Deadpool hey, that's a freebie. It. That's a freebie, Fox. All right, I put he- him I- in Deadpool too. Exactly. I hear that uh, Hugh Jackman doesn't want to get back. Just have Jackie Chan play Wolverine from now out in the other movies. Hey, apparently he's playing Jason Statham in this new movie that he's in coming out soon. So that should be pretty good. <laughs> Wait, what? Jackie Chan is playing Jason Statham? Not actually, but he's playing the exact same character that Jason Statham would have been playing had the script called for a white guy. Pretty good. I'm all for it. Have you not seen any previews for The Foreigner? Oh. First of all, yes, it's called The Foreigner. <laughs> Second of all, it's literally Jackie Chan, and it's uh, Don't Hurt My Daughter, but this time the daughter's actually dead. Is she, and does, so she, it's, did, does she get taken? Uh, I think she just gets murdered. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, remember with the little girl in Rush Hour? Yes. I like to think it's a continuation of that, so where just... <laughs> instead of them saving her, they actually, she actually dies. It's an alternate timeline where the Rush Hour... Yeah. It's similar yeah, to, like... It's, it's the Days of Future Past retcon of Rush Hour. There are three timelines from Rush Hour. There's one where the hero succeeds, uh, there's one where he fails, and then there's one where he goes back in time when he was a kid and is able to stop the events from Rush <laughs> Hour. What happening? Right. And yeah, this one is the one where they failed, so he's, like, just going on a, re- like a revenge rampage across the city. He has, like, a locket with Chris Tucker's face in it. <laughs> he just looks at it sadly. <laughs> Carta. All right. Yeah, it's it's something. Yeah. 
I feel, I feel I get, but I get what you're saying. Like X Men really does have like even more than Pirates of the Caribbean somehow has the most like ups and downs of a movie uh, series that I I can think of. Maybe like second only to like James Bond in terms of quality. Well, differing. James Bond like that's that's a lot more understandable because that's a series of movies that's like going on fifty, maybe old. I don't know. It's it's an it, old it, ass. Yeah, but that's franchise. what I mean. Like um, like it, if you take away that. And the fact that like there it continues on. If you just say like, oh man, that the quality of all these movies is kind of different. It's that, but like put into like a couple years, like maybe yeah, 10 years like X Men. X Men I think is seventeen years old. Yeah, and it's just they can't they can't do it, man. <laughs> they they I I'm almost partially convinced that X Two was an accident. I'm gonna say at the time, yeah. Because like they Logan, in. they they went out and they were like, "We're gonna make a bitchin movie," and they did. But X two, they it just sort of worked. I mean, you can also say that like Deadpool was an accident because they they made something good and then they're like, "We're not releasing it," and then they released it secretly and then they're like, "So you know that movie? Yeah, I think you should make it now." <laughs> like, they're yeah, like, they're constantly shooting themselves in the foot and then trying to correct it. By looking like like telling everyone, come look at us, shoot ourselves in the foot. <laughs> yeah, like, like they they benched Deadpool, and they refused. Someone had, like uh, didn't. Uh, I guess the, the running theory is that Ryan Reynolds is the one that did it. I don't think that ever got confirmed either way. Uh, but they had to leak the test footage so that people could react positively to it, and then they'd be like, "Oh, okay, we'll release the movie." But that's such a like a shining example that they have no fucking clue what they're doing. Yeah. And so I don't know where the, where the the future holds for X Men, but you know, I'll... without Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart, I am very terrified. I am. I hope that Deadpool is able to somehow still be enjoyable. I'm sure Deadpool will be fine, uh, but Dark Phoenix is uh, it's not high on my list. No, they'll have to pull off some amazing character work in order for it to work. So good luck with that. Yeah, I, I don't have faith that that is gonna happen. <laughs> So, I think it's finally time to move on to something else. Yeah, that we can bid the X-Men a fond farewell. We put the X on the grave, and we say goodbye. <laughs> oh, that's sad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said it. Uh, Alright, so here's a preview for your next coming up attraction. Uh, it's Halloween time now. Well, not, it's October, which I'll just call... That we're, might as well be Halloween time. Yeah, we're in the Halloween zone. Which is maybe my f- <laughs> my favorite month, if I'm being 100% honest, because I'm a big fan of horror stuff. I thought you were going to say The Phantom Zone. The, oh man, The Phantom Zone would have also been good. Damn it, son. Uh, <laughs> the, what was it in Danny Phantom? The Ghost Zone? <laughs> <laughs> it was The Ghost Zone. <laughs> <laughs> Their parents were not amazing at uh, uh, naming things. That's why his, like, hero name is Danny Phantom, when his last name is, like, Fenton or something. Yeah, and he looks exactly like himself, but just different colors. <laughs> and, and no one. No one can ever realize. Nope, and his first name's not even different. Nope, but he's gonna catch them all, because he's Danny Phantom. Good fucking show, though. Yes, it is. We're not watching Danny Phantom for what I'm <laughs> gonna be dubbing, uh, Wokey's Spectacular... Spectacular? Spooky stuff. <laughs> Wookie spooky stuff. Which will be for <laughs> the next two uh, videos will be focused around Halloween stuff. The first one coming up, and then the second one will be a secret, because I'll hold it off at the end of the next one. But the movie that we're going to be watching next for the celebration of Halloween is House. Or as it's known in Japan, Hausu, a Japanese horror film. One that Zen has never seen. Not only have I never seen it, uh, he talked to me right before the episode aired just so I would have an idea of what the uh, movie was going to be. And I had never even heard of it before. Apparently, it's a 1977 uh, horror comedy. <laughs> I'm going to put comedy in quotes. I don't think that what they were doing was serious. <laughs> yeah, I'm wa- it's... I, I'm, ex- I'm interested, to, to say the least. I'm expecting a lot of uh, Godzilla-esque campiness. Uh, yes. So just to give a brief <laughs> summary so that pe- what people know, this is a Criterion Collection movie. So it's apparently good, as good as uh, Armageddon. So that's something <laughs> to tell you. And uh, all the scary effects were thought of by a four-year-old girl from Japan. 
so... <laughs> this is gonna be great. I, it's gonna be something special, and I I think Z it will be on Zen's channel next, and he will have to explain what happens in how soon. <laughs> and I'm looking super forward to it, and then... Oh, we pray for me. And then when, for the second part of the celebration, it will be on my channel, it will be dedicated to Halloween specials. And I won't like, reveal exactly what the two Halloween specials we'll be watching, but it will be two random Halloween specials from both our childhood, I'll say at least my childhood, I watched both of them, and possibly yours as well. So. I am wagering, I, I don't know what they are yet, so I'm dropping 90% chance one of them is the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. <laughs> It's possible. <laughs> if only the Great Pumpkin Trap, we might throw that in just because it's like a 23 episode, 23 like, minutes yeah. long. It's like 15 minutes. Yeah, so we'll, we'll throw that on. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what <laughs> mysterious spooky picks we'll have. <laughs> but Make sure to put that generic scary uh, like like spirit Halloween music that they play in the background of this preview. Oh yeah, I'm, uh, there's a currently you can't hear it, but there's a giant lightning storm is going. Poosh. <laughs> and like a cat going meow, every once in a while <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to this yes so thank you all for and god man it's been a while so we, since I've tried to end this but I want you to, to think not like the modcast yes so thank you all for for listening and I want to remind you all to support your, lo your local concession stand <laughs> thanks everybody we'll see you next time bye